Is that going up anymore? Well, I got everything planned. <clears throat> you, you'll you, have COVID test. You no, you you got to take a vaccine, and then you got to wait two weeks. Oh, let's get into this. Joke. You got to wait two Are you weeks. Serious? <clears throat> take the Johnson Oh, you thought you were just allowed to travel month. free, Daddy? Yeah, <laughs> I, I did too. <laughs> wait, what? I, yeah, I didn't know that. You so thought you were allowed to just jump the pond for free, Daddy? Yeah, I thought. You what thought happened? You, so I thought to I, Europe? <laughs> I no, to, I go no Europe's Europe. locked down. I, Doug. They're opening now, down. but they bad. I wear my beret in France. A man can't wear a beret and have a little. There's baguette. there's new variant in UK too. You hear this? Fauci came out and said this. There's a new variant. Now? Yeah. How long are we to buy into Fauci? Huh? No. Is there another one? Well, well according to Fauci, you know he's trying to you know, keep his job. You know he's trying to. Like, Fauci, well, man. Fauci, Fauci, did shit. you get the vaccine? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I didn't want to, but I did. I didn't either. I got. I didn't it. want to just because it's like nobody knows. Like not not against it. I'm not like an anti vaxxer but you don't know like i was actually i was online for the vax and i'm texting friend i was like 10 away uh-huh. and like you know they keep calling and i'm like yo should i be i was texting comics going should i do this <laughs> <laughs> I, comics I, I, was, yeah. I was texting comedians comedians guys that tell dick jokes in yeah. strip malls Bad like, idea. Yo, should i be doing this yo. And, 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 and my and my fucking friends who were on the right were like no fuck i had one friend go don't take that homo juice <laughs> I had a friend tell me, don't take that home. I go, dude, what? Let's fuck that, dude. You're going to be sucking dick. Yeah, You're going to be sucking dick. I go, or it's going to help me. Yeah, we're good. Why, or, 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 or yeah. it could really it's help out. Unbelievable how political it is. I swear to God, take I had that homo juice, bro. I have an Italian friend who goes, guy yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't take the homo juice. Just, <laughs> and I'm just on the phone going, what the fuck? And then I had like friends who were on the left. It's out of my hands. Yeah. That's out of my hands, unfortunately. And then, and then Giannis Papas, who's like one of my dearest yeah, friends, I'm like, Giannis, you think I should do it? He goes, Oh, 100 percent. It's, it's <laughs> science, and I actually took that as if he was a medical doctor. As if, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he's Fauci. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah like, my 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 research, my primary research <laughs> that I did, I you know from the lab would suggest when not telling dick jokes. My primary research, it's unbelievable. It's so like, yeah. The SARS is more my specialty. Or, I, I like when people go, I don't I don't trust it, man. I don't yeah. try. We've seen so, this before. But why have we? Yeah, yeah. I don't trust sure. it. Why man. not? Well, well, Tripoli. I, you know, I, I, get to, oh, I do yeah. a podcast, <laughs> Conspiracy Social Club, where I. Uh. Sam Tripoli hits me with conspiracies and I debunk them and it's just it turns into a shout fest every time it's great uh, but Tripoli's like vaccine shedding bro and I'm like what do you mean <laughs> and he goes you could be near somebody who has the vaccine and it will render you <coughs> infertile that's the that's plan insane. population yeah. control I'm like is there any I mean, measurable the, evidence how did, he, how, I don't know, how did he get there oh don't uh, it's I called mean, YouTube yeah. bro we can go down but, the rabbit hole yeah, you can't. It is. It is a little dicey how fast it rolled out. I mean, Operation Warp Speed was great by sure. Trump, but it is yeah. a little weird. It how does like, have a I month guess, later, like we have something. I was like, yeah. oh, I guess I'll take. I it. guess yeah. the side effects sometimes can be pretty heavy. But that's that's for Chin. Look at I Chin. Mean, Chin got it. Oh, I was fucked up, dude. Oh, you were <laughs> last yeah. night. Last night, it just hits you when you sleep. Did you take the Johnson and Johnson? I took the Moderna. Moderna. You took oh, yeah, that's Moderna. what I, I took. First team all Moderna. And you you, you, you got you got You got Moderna weeks. too. Moderna, yeah. I want that Johnson and Johnson just to mix that's it what up. I'm getting. I'm getting oh, daddy, don't get that. The one what? shot. Yeah. Because it, it fucks people up. It gives you like a third eye or something. You ever heard like this? It gives you a third eye. <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah, you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. You hear that? Percy? Well, Where's I did hear stupid? actually. I don't know if you know this, but like uh, like eight or nine very wealthy women in Connecticut took it, and all of them. Gave birth to black babies. <laughs> they did. Yeah, I oh. have heard that. Yeah, yeah. And so they're enforcing diversity in the womb now. Wow. I don't know. You're, you're doing the Johnson Johnson. Well, Hollywood's yeah. taking this shit yeah, far. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Hollywood's like, hey, guys, we got that's it. what I heard. That's you're all I'm you're doing the Johnson Johnson because you just want the one shot so you can go to Europe. Yeah, but the problem is. You gotta wait two weeks. No, you gotta wait a month for the Johnson Johnson. Two weeks for the five. So my whole what trip is oh. my whole trip is in jeopardy. I can't believe you you're a smart thought, guy. Yeah. Yeah. You're a smart guy. I can't believe nobody in your circle is like, hey, dude, you know you can't travel international with a vaccination. Well, no, I, you, I, 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 I'm getting a vaccination with three weeks to three almost four. Yeah, three weeks. I have uh, um, with three weeks to go. I'm to getting spare? a vaccination. Okay. Oh, yeah. Problem is. Even if I get the Johnson Johnson, I didn't know this. They make you wait a month. You have to wait a month. Yeah, we got to see if it works. Meaning Europe's going to make you oh, wait a I month. See. We, we, we got to see, see if it takes. Yeah. Not, oh, a, the, yep. the respect. Now so there's a low the, risk that it doesn't take. Yeah, yeah, but I've already had COVID, so that, that sometimes there's a loophole there. So I can get just. So I can't shot. go. Some if I didn't have the Moderna shots and I want to go to Italy tomorrow, I can't. You cannot go. I did not know that. It, it, <laughs> I did not know that. It's country by country. Like some of them are loosey goosey, and then uh, especially UK oh. is strict, strict. They tell you before you book your ticket, though. 
I they, they didn't tell me. Yeah, because you went to Hawaii. I went to Hawaii and they gave me a whole protocol of like rules Hawaii's and things I needed to do. Though. Yeah, Hawaii's not. You don't think internationally they would tell you what you need to oh, do before you get They didn't tell in. me when I bought my oh, tickets. Sure. What? I spent for a lot sure. of money on my tickets. But, hey, and they did didn't you, tell me. Who booked your tickets? Me. No, you didn't. You've never booked tickets in your life. <laughs> Someone to else you. booked it. <laughs> Man, what else is going on? Up, <laughs> <laughs> Paul Verzi, yo, everybody. Yo, uh, the, the cards can be duplicated. They're like People are saying that the cards are like... What? Being, being like, yeah, and it's like, a little, it's like, of course it is. Huh. Like it's not laminated. It's not. It's, it's, not. it's, it's no. It's not. It, it, mine right it literally right. looks I, I like mine in my wallet. <laughs> just, have you seen it? Like the no, but I might have to make a couple calls. It's just like yeah, like, you don't. Know, I have that exact yeah, paper. Where, it's it's a piece of paper. It, it's like it's a piece of paper. Don't show that on camera. I did that information. It's like bigger than your wallet, so it won't fit. It's it's all right. Yeah. You know what? I got some friends in the underworld. I can make a couple. No, I know. I know. a guy. He goes. I got it for two hundred bucks. I got one. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna. I mean, of course, but well, of course yeah, that's well, gonna yeah. Well, I'm sure. It's and they write it with a pen. Yeah, especially just, if it's like they just get a card and go, hey, on this date, and then they. But they, fast they do give you a lot number. There's a lot number from the batch of the vac vaccines where it traces oh. back to where you got it. Oh, okay. But they they can figure all that stuff out. Yeah. But but you know now and start you know because June fifteenth LA opens because then the virus decides to leave on the fifteenth. But all right, <laughs> yeah. like Starbucks. You go in and it says if you're vaccinated, you don't have to have to have a mask. And I'm like, all right, go on, have my mask. And then they'll, they'll go, are you vaccinated? I'm like, oh, you think people are actually going to tell the truth? Oh, they're going. Right. They so they ask. It's the honor system. Yeah. Oh, get the fuck out of here. And mm, lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna lie. Did you have any side effects? Uh, no, I just had chill. I had like a little chills after the second dose. Yeah. First dose, nothing. No. Second dose, I felt like I was like getting a little sick. I I, I was getting pissed, dude. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? I I'm, I don't have I have I had antibodies a year later too. Mm -hmm. They said so. They think I caught it twice. They thought, oh, I, really? they thought I had COVID twice. It's funny the way you t told us you th when you found impossible. out you caught COVID. I don't they think don't, they don't know. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm a fucking NBA player. I, yeah, like Rudy Gobert let me know that I was COVID positive. I was just he like, was the first reason. one. He was the reason yeah. NBA yeah. went into lockdown. He's the reason that they can have any fans. Yeah, he said he's like I can't smell anybody else, not smell or taste. And I went downstairs in my you know laundry room. I smell for uh, put for breeze in my face. Couldn't smell it. Woke my wife up three o'clock in the morning. I was like I can't smell shit. She's like what? That's not even a. And I was like, yeah, no, it's a Rudy Gobert, the jazz. It's just set. <laughs> She's like, who? She's like, well, I go, fucking Rudy Gobert. He's not a he's fucking France. You, you gotta be balls deep like, in the basketball. Like, no, Rudy you Gobert. Know, yeah. You might be defensive player of the year. Yeah, who's Rudy, 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 Rudy Gobert? Gobert? Defense player of the year. Yeah, come on. France. The he French kid? He was he touching the mics. You know what? She's like, oh, it's three o'clock in the fucking morning. Okay, I gotta be up with the kids. What the fuck are you talking about? How old are your kids? <laughs> My kids are 12 and 9. Oh, yeah. I got yeah. What brought you to LA besides this glorious podcast? Uh, a bunch of shit, a bunch of podcasts. Um, oh, yeah. I'm doing, uh, me and Bill Burr do the Anything Better podcast. So we're yep. doing, this is the first episode that we're going to be together. in the studio together God. because There's we were doing it on Zoom yeah. for so yeah. long. And uh, and then I'm flying uh, Friday uh, to Austin. I'm doing the uh, doing Vulcan. Vulcan. Vulcan uh, great gas I'm, company. I'm doing that Friday Saturday. It's cool. So it's, I figured it's like you're here. performing at a Slipknot concert. Yeah, like the, <laughs> the background's like all like steel and there's people are you know the bleachers and shit. Oh, it's, it's a cool. cool. It's a it's like a cool, cool end of the show. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. Great. Oh yeah, it's great. Have yeah. you done Have you done the Albany Funny Bone? It's one. I mean, I, I shouldn't probably say this, but the Albany Funny Bone and the Syracuse Funny Bone are two of the fucking worst rooms <laughs> in the United States of America. I'll and be if there. they don't have me back, I, I, I would fucking thank them. <laughs> I'll be there. Fucking, you're you're going to put me in a fucking <laughs> mall next to a Dave and Buster's? Yeah. It, it was the fucking lowest people on earth are in fucking Syracuse. Have you done a Connecticut Funny Bone? So, uh, yeah, that one That one I don't mind as you much as like the, the, the one. Oh, the, the Hartford one? The Hartford, Hartford one is yeah. like, it was I'm scheduled like, to do. I was scheduled to do the. Me, like, and, me and Dub David are doing. I, I'm bringing Dub up with me. Uh, I, we're doing J June 18th and 19th Albany Funny Bone uh, but I don't know my agent's like it's a great it's an A room I'm like, uh, right. you said it's an A you know it's not, you've been in the game for 40 years you know it's not an A room 40 years, yeah. 40 uh, yeah. years. I mean we'll you know see. it's not but, I, but listen yeah. what, we, what, so how, what was your assessment again <laughs> you just told me it's the two worst rooms you've ever no, no, Syracuse is tough I've done Syracuse, Syracuse, Syracuse stuff. Stuff. well Syracuse listen before like I'm now over the last like two years I started moving tickets a little bit so when I was there they were the room seats like 500 one of the rooms the one in Syracuse seats almost 500 it's a big boy room so they would yeah so they would like give discounts and paper and then those people but it's in a mall yeah. And it was just—it hurts your feelings, you know, and the, and yeah. the yeah, dude, it hurts yeah. Feelings. And, and, like, and Syracuse, you're, ne you're next town. to a sharper image. But you walk by a sharper <laughs> image. Dude, no, yeah, like I, I went shopping. I there. went shopping at Target before my set, <laughs> dude. I had Cinnabon. I had Cinnabon before <laughs> yeah. my set. Walk by a sharper 
three minutes. I'm like, dude, ah. and, and you're alone. All alone. You're, a, you're strolling the mall. My wife's like, can you get toilet paper? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I got 10 minutes before I go. Yeah, on. <laughs> yeah I'm going to drive up from, from New York, I guess, from the city. You know, Those but, mall uh, gigs are so depressing. Well, well upstate tough. New York is, is depressed in general, man. That whole really? state. Yeah, that whole state that economically far, is yeah. fucking yeah. like the opiate issue, all that stuff. So, the entire town's died because... Damn. You know, let's take a little break from the chat with Paul Verzi, because guess what, man? For far too long, Wall Street has neglected the average investor. I'm talking about the people like us giving out the same old generic advice like buy index funds. Meanwhile, for the ultra wealthy, they get access to premium investment strategies and white glove service. That divide didn't sit well with Titan. So they built a premier investment firm. But for all of us, thanks to Titan, now everyday investors can have their capital invested like a world-class investment firm all through the Titan mobile app. <clears throat> Titan's goal is to give you access to the best investment experience in the world, but without the high minimums, lockups, or performance fees. Their in-house investment team invests your capital using their award-winning strategies, delivers daily research updates via the Titan app. It's like having an elite investment manager in your pocket. Titan managed hundreds of millions of dollars for 25,000 clients and counting. And we're named the 2020 Top Investment App of the Year by U.S. News. To get started, download the Titan app right now. Start investing with Titan today. Get three months with zero fees. Visit titanvest.com slash fighter. That's three months with zero fees at titanvest.com slash fighter. You know, you see my thick ass and zoo culture. Like, what shorts is he wearing? I'm wearing 10,000. I've been wearing the seven inch interval short with the inliner, the most versatile they have, man. Tons of features, all right? Uh, versatile, their shirts are dope. They're lightweight, perfect, get, perfect for hit training, circuit training, or just getting swole in general. They sent me one. I love it. It's black. You'll see me all the time in zoo rocking this thing, all right? Um, 10,000 makes the highest quality, best fitting, most comfortable training shorts I've ever worn at the core. 10,000 are three core training shorts built for all the ways you train. They got interval short, foundation short, a session short, then they spread out and whatever workout you're doing, they got you covered. 10,000 is a direct consumer company, no middleman. So you get premium quality fabrics, trims, techniques that the other brands are going to upcharge for. So you don't want that, man. They have over 9,500 five-star reviews. 10,000 is offering you guys 15% off your purchase. Go to 10,000.cc, enter the code FIGHTER to receive 15% off your purchase. That's 10,000, T-E-N-T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D.cc. Enter the code FIGHTER for 15% off. This episode of Fighting the Kids with Paul Verzi is brought to you by the best supplement company on the planet. We're talking about on it, on it supplements. My boy gave me uh, some pre-workout from another supplement company, and I almost shit my pants, and I think it gave me COVID. I don't know, but it, I should have stuck to what I always use. I always use on it, whatever they got. It always mixes well with my body because they're the best. I always trust them. I never have to guess what's in the bottle or what I'm taking. I know it's the best supplements on the planet from freaking shroom tech to krill oil to alpha brain. They got protein powders, creatine. They even got coffee. Whatever you're looking for, on it offers it. They offer it at the highest levels, protein bars, protein bites, plant-based protein if you're a plant lover. We got it all, elk bars, warrior bars. We got streaming fitness, home fitness, so you don't have to go to the gym. The best kettlebells you ever freaking put your big dick beaters on in the world. They got onyx kettlebells, primal kettlebells, everything you need. Sandbags, battle ropes. Like I said, home fitness, streaming fitness, on demand, on it in 30. Go to onit.com slash fighter for 10% off the best supplements on the planet. That's onit.com slash fighter 10% off. Because damn you know you know i'm a big i'm a big uh big big diehard knicks fan and, and my son lucas is too and i was like i told my wife i got back from tampa and uh, i was away my kids get sad when i go away and shit Fuck you know yeah. you know and so i got home and and i said to my i said i'm gonna take lucas to game two or the play now i never been to a knicks playoff game and that and and he never has obviously so i was like i'm gonna take him to game two and uh we go down there and it was fucking it was amazing we they, it was the only game game they won in the series the environment was something i've never felt before electric ever the the the, the, only, the three things that were the most electric i've ever seen we all went to duke unc at duke uh i was at game one of the world series yankees mets yankees i'm a yankee fan they won in extras 
and this this beat it, this beat both. Oh wow! This Ooh. beat both. Like when I tell you the garden, and it was like the second time, second day ever they allowed sixteen thousand in the garden since pandemic. People are so when crazy. I tell you it was fucking. There was a, there was an alley oop from half court, and everybody's going, oh, it's too high. He's not going to catch it." And fucking, he took two hand and yoked it. When I tell you the fucking, I could feel it now. The place, my son, <laughs> my son, he's yeah. like, a, he was like two days before twelve, and he just goes, "Let's fucking go!" <laughs> Dude, he was like, and he was like, "Is it alright if I curse?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> like, we're at the next game. But but the point of the story is the homeless around there. Like my son was even oh, like, yeah. like it was more than normal. Like New York City right now is fucked up. West Village. A woman was eaten. Somebody just came with a crowbar, smashed the window, cut her back up. Like it's still going on, oh, like yeah. in, in pockets. But my son was like holding my hand, looking at me, and then it was like lines of homes that I haven't seen in New York in a long time. So, damn. so yesterday, the the sheriff, so the city council member, is held in a press conference down on the boardwalk in Venice. Now the boardwalk in Venice yep. down here is a de facto shanty. It's town. the Walking Dead. What happened was Venice oh, said, wow. Venice front. said, well, you oh, can live shit. on the beach because it's run by L.A. Yeah. Shout out to Mayor Garcetti and council member Mike Bonin, who do nothing, right? So LA runs it. So all of a sudden, everybody who's anybody all over the country realizes you can sleep on the beach in Venice. So now there are 300, oh, 400 t- tents, or whatever. It's shantytown down there. What? So so people get stabbed. People get, when you go down there, people are naked. It's, it, people are mentally deranged. They're, they're on drugs. It's a disaster. And the council member is down there giving a press conference on what to do. And a homeless do woman shit who's like naked comes up with a knife. <laughs> this woman and tries kind of to stab. Him. He Start starts, move. comes up at him and starts to stab. So he, they got to get the cops. So finally the sheriff, pe- sheriffs have a lot of power in counties. People For sure, that. yeah. And the sheriff of, of LA County came down and he goes, so this is nonsense. <laughs> this is nonsense. I'm clearing the whole fucking thing out by Ju- July 4th. Really? Ooh. Yeah. And so he goes, <clears throat> if you look at, it stops at Santa Monica and it stops at Marina Del Rey. Why? Because they run their own city. Yep. And only Venice. So he goes, and so now I'm coming in and all the homeless advocates and all these people are like, you can't do, you don't have that jurisdiction. That's cool. That's great. This is nonsense. No, it's we can't live like for, wow. No kids. Why are people can, fighting can't take for my it. kids yeah. down there. Yeah. Because you have, because there's a narrative that says, oh, this is a housing issue and a, and a wealth pay gap issue. This is a fucking yeah. mental health mental drug. Health. You get the they turn f- everything it's political. Oh, they make it's addiction. They turn everything everything is political that. because now, now with how politically divided we are, there's a line in the in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and if you even even come close to hinting that you're not, you know, feeling for the people that don't have a place to. Meanwhile, it's violent. It's not good. It, but it's if just you not say, good. But if it's you say that, you're, you're like not compassionate. You shouldn't that. be allowed to set up a tent. A, a, a whole home structure yeah. on a public beach where kids and other people are going and yeah. taking a shit. And then like what right about those places of up. business that yeah. can't make a dollar now? They're having major problems, and, the, and their entire life savings are in that. Yeah, no one wants business. to go over and there. People are afraid now, to do, walk do there. Do those yeah. people not count? Yeah. Or what about the people right. that spent their entire life savings? Buy to buy a house in Venice, it's yeah. expensive as fuck, dude. Yeah. But yeah. now the property value's down. They can't leave. That's right. right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's true. I can't sell my place. Yeah. I mean, you know, so I don't have any... So what are you talking about? It has nothing to do with compassion. It has nothing to do with... No. This is nonsense. But if it's you have not compassion, you, like, you, you hear these business owners' stories. Yeah, how about con- that? Because you want to... Because there's piss yeah. everywhere and you smell human And they shit. also contribute yeah. to a society. Yeah. So who are we going to protect? Yeah, it's the economy, yeah. motherfuckers. That's and and tourism is dead down there. You could. Crazy. You don't want them to bite you. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, yeah, I don't want to fight it. Tourism, it's, it's, it is, it's also that these people are actually, a lot of them are truly mentally ill. Oh, and 100%. Have yeah. drug yeah. And a lot of them are just help. straight up addicts. Dude. And yeah. A lot, I don't yeah. know why we don't fake. Like, some are. just like fucking getting high and that's their shit. Yeah, and they need to get into a treatment center that you can't, you can't, if you're an addict and you want to, you're not allowed to set up a whole uh, a meth den right there. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is what's no, you're, going you're enabling them by doing nothing. But I'm allowed to live yeah, on yeah. beachfront it property. It's fucking it just nonsense. Gets worse. It's nonsense. Something so, has to be done. So how do they stop? What do they do? So what they do is they. they I wish we could they, do, if we could figure out, we'd all be way rich. The sheriffs go down there. That was the, what they're doing is they're going down there and they're going ten by ten. Going. So you got to get out of here. You know that we're getting you out yep. of here. That's happening. That fixed the Venice problem. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is you hear your options gonna go. for treatment and options for where you can go and stay. Shelters. Problem with shelters is addicts don't want to go to shelters. There's curfew. They can't get high. And a lot of them. Uh, except women and children only, I think. That's, some that's of those, true. Yeah, but they have yeah some of those shelters, shelters yeah. yeah. There's yeah. that. Yeah, and some... Oh, and some yeah, it's of, a real problem. And, and there's like, yeah, like, because I guess uh, a lot of times the women 
they'll get like abused in those. Yeah, they get raped and they stuff. They get raped and stuff in those. They, uh, they said the only like major yeah. metropolitan city that's done it right was Houston because they attacked it 10 years ago. And now their homeless problem is they don't have a problem. Right. But they're they're like the only major city you can who addressed it 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I didn't really see any when we were out there. Not at all. Huh. There's a way to solve these problems. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I, you put the mafia. Mafia takes care of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You ever hear Johnny A. Light? Johnny A. Light and Chris. Uh, uh, Chris Chris D's, yeah. But he yeah. was he wasn't kidding when he no. said he was like if, if John Gotti. Saying? He said if John Gotti and those guys were he was like De Blasio and Cuomo would be have a talking to like this wouldn't be happening. Yeah. And like there's kind of truth. There's kind of because yeah. I mean obviously what the mob does I'm not trying to condone but there's order. There's order. There's like it's you gotta like, respect hey, we're gonna it. we're gonna make sure the neighborhood is clean. I for remember everybody. New York. Yeah. Listen, you're gonna give us a cut yeah, 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 yeah. but we're gonna make sure that I don't have a problem with that it's like paying I, taxes I, 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 yeah, I'd, right? rather, I'd rather have the mafia running fucking Calabasas right now than our fucking well, governor if, if the mob, I'd rather give them my money I have some protection yeah. if the mob is running shit you're not gonna have homeless people in the neighborhood it's not gonna happen and in fact notoriously when the mob lived somewhere in that neighborhood there was zero crime in that neighborhood oh. you're not you're paying around. taxes anyway how yes. great would it be just to watch mob dudes walk out of like a joint and just walk up to homeless dudes go come on get up get your shit out <laughs> Not here. Not here. Move it. Get, 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 get his blanket. Smells like shit. Get him away from me. Ruining my lunch. This fuck. I remember. I remember when when I'm, I'm old enough to remember when when Gotti ran the city. You know, and it was a different thing. It, there were certain areas and there were certain things you just didn't do. You didn't do, yeah. yeah. But you didn't have to like they weren't they weren't like gang members where you got to no. worry for your safety. No. Like they only fucked with each other. Yeah. Like their their code was mm -hmm. not to hurt innocent people there was yeah. or family there was members. There was a real strict order. Yeah, and there was no like he, no women and children. Yeah, it was just like if, yeah. if this guy fucks up or gets out of line or you know then something's gonna be done and that's it. But but things were nice. That's things right. were New York was New York had the really bad in the early eighties. You yeah. remember like with the graffiti was everywhere. Crazy. Violence was everywhere. And then Giuliani Giuliani yeah. was. And people crazy. forget Giuliani he, was a real badass. Dude, I know he, he's a little crazy now. Changed, yeah. You're talking about a real badass. Oh, dude, though, he dude. changed. So so Giuliani Giuliani's father got shaken down by the mob a lot. Yeah. And so Giuliani had a vendetta. I remember when Giuliani said, if you belong to an organized crime family in this city, I declare we are declaring war on you. I just watched that the other you. day, yeah. And, yeah, and, oh, and Giuliani, Rico. Giuliani, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a Rico. prosecutor. He got all of them. When he shut down oh, Fulton shut Fish down. Market, Fulton Fish Market was run by the mob, straight up. You didn't have a stand there unless you had, you paid a VIG or you were involved with the mob in one way or another. So the Fulton Fish Market, which was one of the biggest fish markets in the world, doesn't mm -hmm. seem like a lot. That's so much money. That's so, like fish is so expensive. It's a so nice expensive. fish market oh, though when yeah. they were running it. Yeah. So he, 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 I'm all for the mafia coming back <laughs> as we keep talking about this. He opened it up though. He opened it up to he opened up construction to different companies and yeah. he opened up the Fulton Fish Market. I remember they set the whole fucking thing on fire. The whole Fulton Fish Market was burning to oh. the ground. I remember it. When they, there was smoke, it was on the news. Their mom was like, What? We can't. You're taking it away? Well, then we're going to burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen that That's John Gotti? Hilarious. I think it was on Annie. It was John Gotti and his son. Because remember when he got pinched, his son yeah. they thought was going to take over? Yeah. yeah. And his, they have the actual footage in prison of, of the him. son come, going to talk to his dad. I and saw he's that. So nervous. And he's like, you know, I don't want to be in this business. And, and his dad just a like, killer dude. Yeah. No, he's dude. like, you don't fucking rat you don't turn no. he's Anyways. like i'll stay fucking in here i'm not talking because they're gonna come after you again don't you see and then he starts leaving again and he's like no dad he's wiping his eyes he's he, he looked at his dad like when his dad his dad came out of, i think his dad got out of jail and like went into his room and he just like he was like so like nuts this is my dad you know yeah. and he looks at his wall and he goes he sees a poster and he goes oh the mets huh and he goes yeah i like the mets dad and his dad just goes I'm a Yankee fan. He goes, dude, from that thing, he's like, I ripped that fucking <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, I ripped that fucking <laughs> well, dude, That is that fucking John hilarious. John fucking God. He's the most <laughs> famous guy in New York. He was on the cover of Time that Magazine. Teflon Don. I mean, that, that, was, that was his downfall. That that was his downfall amazing. was that. That's why the yeah. other mafia guys couldn't stand him. He's like, fuck he the Mets. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Yankees fan. Because if you love your dad, even if he's a fucking mailman, you're going to root for him. If he's John Gotti. Yeah. You know, oh, I, my you, fucking dad got me into Star Trek. Like, he was all about Star Trek. I was like, I guess I'll get it. There were only two times I saw those guys in New York. I remember I was at Cafe Sorrento, and the Rave Night Club was right next door, right? Yeah. So you'd see a limo, and you'd see some dude, kind of a burly-looking guy with, like, a earpiece in. And he. And then the only time a I saw anybody come in or out of that place, because we were always looking for Gotti to go in, you know? Mm. And uh, the only time I saw it was I saw these two guys about your size and built like you with suits on. They were walking out Gorillas. on their way somewhere. 
And I never forgot. I never forgot. You show how respect fragile. and suck the boys off, bro. I was. That's when you realized that you're not. A, you're not a tough guy or a knuckle breaker. And no, I did. I don't know. No, cool. You gotta show your respect. Yeah, how'd you get there? You no, got because like, you gotta pay your. No, oh, not like that. You're protecting the streets. Oh, he's like, minding his feet. Like, hey, you, you hey. you'll be a thing. Yeah, like, yeah, like he did go there quick. Who's sucking my dick? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, wait, what was he young? I mean, I, I got young. money. I got I was cash. Young. Yeah, it doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> Right here, I, I would have had no choice. By no, the what the fuck, fuck out of here! I don't know, man. It's a weird. This is Goodfellas too, man. I don't know. So why this is the show, bro? This is the show. If you can't hang, then yeah. And then why I saw. Why is sucking dick? I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. How why is no? But why is sucking so dick always the desperate? Like I, I was gonna do this bit about like, are all drug dealers? Gay because it's always like, yeah. yo, dude, I had to suck dick to get. Like, why is always why, dick yeah. sucking? Like, could it be something else? It's always like, dude, I hit rock bottom, dude. I was yeah. sucking dick in an alleyway. Yeah. Like, why did it? Like, like could you have, why did it have it to go always there? goes to that. I'm, like, every drug. Well, what else right, is one thing you can There has to be other options. There has to be like, other like, options. Like, like, some gay drug dealers. It's almost like, is that like in the book? It's like, listen, man, I, you know, I'm not gay or anything, but it does say you got to suck my dick. Because you're I rock bottom. I feel like that would be That's rock bottom. I feel like it's It's always, it's it's always sucking. It's, it's, always suck. like, it's always like even that like Key and Peele sketch. Yeah. And like Judge Jesse, he was like he was also a crack whore. Yeah. <laughs> like this, and he's on his knee, and it's like why is it always sucking dick? Why? I think that I think I think if you're straight, great like, foot massage, like dude, you know what you gotta do? Yeah. Yeah. Rub these sucks. feet, dog. It's always <laughs> rub these skis, dog. Mouth is a mouth, I guess. <laughs> mouth. mouth is a mouth. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean shave, to interrupt your shave your whiskers. <laughs> I know Brian was trying no, to tell the story. When you're like this and you're straight and you're straight, you gotta get ah fuck. No, I'm sorry, Lou. Do you suck in the mafia uh, guys uh, off when you saw him? Uh, I guess I gotta. He likes it smooth. <laughs> no, I'm straight. It's just that I gotta get a thing. Uh, yeah. Dry shaving. By the way, we started shaving. the show. You started the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah we're going. We're going. Well, you guys just started talking. I was like, yeah. Right. What well, we kicked Dude, off the internet? How crazy it is. Uh, I was. I, when's the last time I saw you? So when I met, this is so cool. When I met you, I was. Uh, this is years ago because I, yeah, I haven't worked with. 2017. Was it 2017? Yeah, it was 2017. Okay, so four years. Yeah. So I was, uh, Burr called me up and goes, hey, you want to open for me at, uh, it was Stand Up Live. It was yeah. a bigger one. And we go to the hotel to meet, and he's working the, he's working valet. at the hotel. He's working yeah. valet at the hotel. So you came up, you were super nice, like, hey, yeah. what's going on? And I liked your shoes. And, and Oh, well, yeah. I liked your Jordans. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, I got Jordans on now. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. But you, you, came, you came up to me and you were like, hey, what's going on? I was like, oh, we're at the comedy. Like, oh, that's so dope. You're like, I'm a comedian too. So then Bill came over and yeah. you're like, I'm a comedian. And Bill was like, oh, you want to do time tonight? Fuck. And and he he was like yeah so we we met him that he came on stage you opened like whatever you did great it was fun it was a good time and then it was a it was and, a great week and then yeah. I, yeah and then like from afar I just saw what you were doing and, and it's so so it's kind of it's, cool it's, it's kind of crazy yeah like it's, that we're here because I was yeah I was a fucking cool. ballet you you and Burr were boys from from New York so no Burr is from Boston. So, but um, he came up in the New York scene, right? He came up in the New York scene, and uh, I like my first manager just like kind of threw me. I didn't even host. He's just like, I got a big one for you. It's gonna be uh, Rascals Comedy Club, Montclair, New Jersey. It was like Opie and Anthony, and it was like Burr's first. It was actually Burr's first like weekend weekend for like him, and he packed the place out, four hundred people. Holy shit! And I think this, Burr, was this after the Philly rant? This he he had like this that he had like a few things happen. I think yeah. it might have been the Philly thing, but yeah. and there's like four hundred people, and it was Thanksgiving Eve. I opened for Bobby Kelly on the Thanksgiving mm -hmm. Eve Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then Bobby's like, oh, he wasn't gonna be there for the weekend. And they go, oh, someone else is coming, and oh, Burr's gonna come in and do the Friday Saturday after Thanksgiving given so uh he it was 400 people dude and i was like not even a host like i didn't host i would just like do longer sets in this and I, I got on stage and like i guess he heard me and he was like dude were you the other guy on the show he's like i was downstairs he fucking crushed and he's like i'm gonna watch you so he just watched me we kind of just stayed in contact that way and then like oh eight oh nine he was like hey man you want to come on then we just became like super super then he yeah. just became like my mentor he's my son's godfather and shit oh, wow. and uh yeah but he's like like we were talking before when a guy like that says you know like when you he's know, john gotti basically it was just like, he's john gotti <laughs> yeah like that that's the thing it was like, i mean i'm not gonna suck him off but yeah he's john gotti <laughs> yeah. if you're made yeah. he'll make it yeah. he'll make it yeah yeah you're like made man. when somebody like you know like that is you know working with you and it was like hey like he but he would say shit that like he saw things like that the thing about bill is bill is like even beyond stage he's he's like ahead of everything so like he told me like it was like fucking 12 years ago i'm in my we're in a condo I got a baby at home, my wife, 
you know, and I'm f featuring here and there for people doing contests and shows, doing the urban circuit. And I had worked with Bill a couple times, and he called me up, and he's like, "Yeah, man, so you know, I saw with you, you're gonna, you're gonna headline, you're gonna, you're gonna sell out clubs, and you're gonna get into theaters." And I'm going, "Like this is 12 years." I'm going, "Dude, I'm making 400 dollars this week. What the fuck is yeah. this guy talking about?" Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, "No, man." He's like, "I, I, you know," and and he was, and so, and it, but but he never would give it up until it was time to give it up. Like, he, like we were talking before, he'd always be like, "Hey, man, good job this weekend." And then all of a sudden, I think it was like 2010. He's like, "Dude, watching what you're doing is a beautiful." And then and then he started to be like, "Yo, man, like." You're ready for a special, and and then and then getting that from that means more. Like when Colin Quinn gives sure. you a compliment, those guys give you compliment. Those are guys that like. That's mm. why, like, I'll be honest with you, I didn't get in this business for podcasts or to be a radio host. I got in this business because Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. I got in this business because yep. I saw Eddie Murphy raw, not delirious. For me, it was raw. Yeah, raw was my dad took me at. I was oh, 10 you saw years it live? Old. No, it, it was in movie theaters. <laughs> oh, and yeah. my 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 grandmother How and, and mother. I'm 42. Okay. My grandmother and mother were like, you can't take him to see Raw. You know, it was like 1987, and my dad loved comedy. My dad took me to see Rodney Dangerfield. At, I saw the Raw concert was, in D.C. The, did, the oh, did you? Yeah, it was really Yeah, and, and he took me, and I was like, <clears throat> that was it. Game like on. Like Beverly Hills Cop, you know, 48 hours. Yeah. Like everything was like, uh, Eddie, Eddie was everything. So, uh, and then and then getting into this and, and, and doing this was just like, that was that was it for me, like seeing that shit, Fucking man. Fucking rap that, after that. that. Was, yeah, that was, that's, that's why, you know. And then now here I am, 20 years, professional for like, 16 but you know it was it was always stand up first so for me it meant more stand up meant more mm -hmm. like you yeah. know i see a lot of people going out for followers and doing shit and there's some certain things you know burr also said mm -hmm. to me another thing that he was right about he's like it's going to take a guy like you longer because he knows my approach you know i'm a family dude but i'm just not a dude that's going to fucking Pour put on up. lipstick and fucking run out and do a man on the street in my underwear yeah. and listen if a fucking dude gets <clears throat> followers doing that and right. they sell out clubs doing, doing that, it. like yeah. that's I'm yeah. not I'm not hating on that. But for me, I love when my fans are like, "Oh, Verz, I love your approach, man. Like yep. you're just you're just it's a real genuine thing. I love your stand up." And and so for you me, have the that's, old school approach, more like the the traditional comic approach. Really, but but I'm also like I adapt it. Like I built a, a podcast studio in my home. Yeah, I I do. You know, I, I have fun on podcasts. I, I love doing them, but it's just kind of like you know, I, I loved. I just love. Yeah, I love seeing the development of stand-up. I love seeing yourself get better from album to first special. Yep. Now I'm shooting my next special in September, and it's like, that's the... Where are you oh, shooting in me. September? I think I'm actually... Funny, I think I'm going to shoot it at this 400-seater in West Nyack. Uh, I might shoot it at... Oh, you know... I've Levy, been to West Nyack. Yeah, 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 I've, been, I've done things. that club. Yeah, so Rosie O'Donnell did an HBO there. They have a giant stage. It's like a giant stage. It almost looks like a little theater, and then it goes up a little bit, and it's like a 400-seater. I haven't done that club. club. I was supposed to do it, and I canceled that's right it's yeah, it's West actually yeah, it's supposed to be a good club that's it's right. actually i did my first one at the terrytown music hall <clears throat> which i love it's like a you know it's like a thousand seater but this one with covid restrictions and, it's, and i'm it, ready to go so we just got to get it where are you gonna where is it gonna be distributed uh i can't i, I could i can't say but I'll tell you, yeah i'll tell you off air yeah i'll tell you off air but it'll be on a major it'll be on a, a major streamer and i know that it's better than the first one so i can't wait for people to that's, that's why i had to sit, i had to sit on it for like I had to sit on it, but like, you know, having my peers go, this next one's, this next one's, you yeah. know? Hell yeah. So, so cool. I'm, I'm excited. You know, I was thinking about Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy might be the only comic ever to have been that good, that young, yeah. to be, to be, to be, uh -oh. to have had, but you're talking about, he was on SNL when he was 19, 19. Yeah. and the country was talking about him. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the whole country was talking he about saved him. saved the show, too. I, I mean, yeah. the show oh, yeah. was yeah. Think yeah. About the show. 19, and then, and then stand up, I think it was Dove was talking about this, like, stand up is the only, you know, very few times where you have a very young person write an amazing novel, and I think stand-up is very similar. You don't really see people get get their voice until not they're in their thirties. You're not when you're young, right? It's very you don't rare. have perspective. Yeah, you can yeah. be funny. You can be like yeah. raw funny. Yeah, yeah. You know, but but I mean, it's really hard to kind of have, be a, a comic where mm. people go off. But Eddie Murphy, man, he when he, he was, was twenty was twenty two when, when he did the first one and twenty five. Think, think about yeah. that. Think, I mean, and, stadium and, show. And, and, I, I went to an arena. Chappelle too. Chappelle was what seventeen doing stand up. I think he started fourteen. He started in eighth grade. So like that's the only job he's ever had. in, so yeah, I feel like that too. I feel like you. You you do it in your twenties. I feel like you get good at it in your thirties, and then I think if you if you have a career and you were fortunate enough to get past it, 40s, then you become 50s, then you could become you, a, yeah. yeah, then you become one of the dudes. But like Eddie, you're, I agree with you, Brian. Like Eddie, when he did his drunk uncle or his drunk father, oh, he took he put you in a mentally. You were in a movie. 
No, like you're like you no longer like saw Eddie. You, you, you saw just, the drunk father. You, you saw the drunk father, yeah. and then he's doing it, and he's twenty something years old, oh and his wife can't leave the house. Yeah, he's oh, doing yeah. it. So he's funny, <laughs> and he's somebody else. Relatable. Uh-huh. And then, Such and a then, good actor. And then, just Such a and good then he just stopped. Well, yeah. He just stopped. Just stopped. I think and he got so rich, and he started. I have a couple theories on it. One, let's hear. He got super rich, and he got. I think he started smoking weed all the time, twenty four seven, and sometimes that can kind of. Oh, like shit. it kind of re- it kind of dulls you a little bit it kind of kind of relaxes you, you depends how you are but i think with him in that sense i think the combination of being high all the time with all the money i think in, I in think a way, it's more of all comic, the money for him yeah and as a comic you just need that thing that, I, that, I think that's why kevin hart's a beast because think about it, he's basically similar career to eddie right like major movie stars yeah. maybe five bigger movie stars in the world than kevin hart yeah and still tours like a motherfucker Heavy. still yeah, puts I, in the work still also, does clubs Eddie also he has writers said, but i'm right. just saying still you know especially i did from his house you know pretty relatable you know yeah. especially you have kids i, I think Eddie like, was still also, doing it yeah he's kevin's always stayed hungry but i think eddie was also afraid from what i heard he was also afraid that his old anti-homophobic his old homophobic yeah. stuff and also the fact that he got kind of caught picking up somebody who was mm. in drag that was stuff that he was he was worried he was going to get called out on and he didn't want to I heard that. I heard another thing too that it was a, a lot of people were just shouting at him on stage like he was just so well, famous Steve, Steve Martin said that Steve Martin said I knew I had to stop doing comedy when you know he's doing his Egyptian thing with a guitar and the the his closing thing with the guitar, the guitar would well, come yeah. down and whatever the stage manager messed up in the guitar didn't come down and the crowd's dying laughing he's like i didn't even say anything i haven't done any stand-up yeah they're laughing at this bullshit like they should be upset because they paid all this money and then they were shouting my lines before i could get them out he's like oh yeah stop doing this like yeah. the yeah. ride's over or write a, yeah. or write yeah. a whole new hour they were, yeah, yeah i guess with eddie they were shouting like stuff from his movies at him while he was Ed, eddie was saying, but steve martin saying they were shouting his old stuff yeah. Not oh, this wow. crap. Oh, yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah. dude, this the isn't. Ones. Just yeah. Yeah. And he's like, dude, this isn't what I'm doing. Yeah. So he's like, I gotta get out. I think too what you said too. I think Eddie is so Eddie's been famous for 40 years on the level of yeah. fame. Like we we think that yeah. some of these YouTube people are famous. Oh, like no. this is no. like Eddie is like Tom Cruise famous. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie is like there's a level of fame and he's there in comedy where with very few. Mm-hmm. You could even say above. Chappelle and like Eddie Murphy's he, fucking Eddie Murphy. Like I, it's, I, would, I would say he's bigger. He, he's on a different. He's, he's Eddie Murphy's different on stratosphere. A, yeah, Eddie Murphy's like the fucking Michael Jackson of I, I, of comedy. I agree. And it's like an iconic so thing. Talented. So talented. Like, he's so on stage. He talented. probably is afraid of expectations, but I think he especially should, now. I think yes. he should just if he loves it. If if he really really loved it and wanted to do it, he would be doing it and just put that aside. He's probably just like he probably thinks it's not enough to gain. I think you're what you just said is he's he's worried about expectations. It's really hard to kind of like well, you know he was gonna he was gonna do he started to do it like he was booking clubs and stuff to get back into mm, it because yeah. he i guess he would throw a party like once a month or maybe even once a week and kevin hart and all the big dogs would go to it and kevin hart on his uh serious show was like i'm telling you he's the funniest guy in the room yeah like, oh he yeah can easily oh, do no it. Gosh, he can one, easily yeah. do it they're okay. like so finally he was like yeah, i'm gonna do it and we're like yeah and then COVID hit so it shut it down. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if he's going to revamp it. Yeah, I know he was thinking about doing it because he was talking about it on Comedians and Cars with he, Coffee. He, yeah, so, but, but that was before the pandemic. So he you, had yeah. a whole plan. Right. And remember, poor Damon Wayans. Remember, he was starting to, he, there, there was rumors that he was popping up at clubs that at the comedy store, they didn't announce that they said special guest oh, yeah. star. Uh, so all everybody there, thought it was going to so be Eddie Murphy. So all the Murphy. comics were all yep. in the back like, this might be Eddie Murphy. This yep. thing. And Damon Wayans walks Shit. in. Oh. So the whole crowd thought it was Eddie Murphy. The only reason I love Damon Wayans. Yeah, yeah. And when he walked in, I was like, my heart for him was like, oh no. Yeah, I remember he that. He could have the hottest ten minutes right now, <laughs> like, and it doesn't matter because like, like, you're not Eddie Murphy. And all the comments Dude, and, were that, and, oh, and it didn't go well. Oh, and I was just like, oh, oh no. no. Then he was up in the green room backstage, and I just went up to him. I was like, what's up, legend man? You know they this everyone is like was Frank, expecting Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> he was like Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Why the fuck would Eddie Murphy come? Like. I don't if it's Eddie Murphy, no matter who it is, you're going to be disappointed. Like, no matter who. <coughs> it's like like Frank Grillo grew up, was telling me a story about how he grew up pretty, really poor. And his dad, he, they, they were going to buy a, like a, a car. And it was like some kind of a like, it wasn't a Cutlass, but it was like this new model, you know, Chrysler or some shit. And they were looking at the pictures and, you know, they had no money. So they're looking at pictures and Frank's like, look at the interior, there's leather. And we got wheels. Look at the wheels, man. They're shiny. And he's like so excited. And he's like, we're going to be able to drive around the neighborhood in this. He was making plans. Yeah. You know, it's like, you feel like your dad has a car. Yeah. And, 
and, it's, and he's they're, they're you know back then he's, he goes to get the car and they're waiting to see the new car because they're gonna go to the they're gonna go places in a car and it's also like you know it's this beautiful shiny limo looking car and he said he they pulled up and the wheels were that big <laughs> and, and it wasn't black it was brown it was shit brown and the interior was shit brown and and, and Frank goes like this Frank he's with his mother and he goes that's not the car. <laughs> And, and he's gonna start to cry and his mother grabs his oh, hand and she goes, she goes she goes she goes your father will never own car. Oh, yeah. this is his car yeah. and you act excited yeah. and frank was like okay. yeah. <laughs> dude, expectations, what a gangster mother dude, by the way expectations will fuck you. it's like when i turned 16 my best friend joy shenagel his 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 family got him this i'll never forget this this volkswagen golf and it was like lime green it was the coolest thing and then he was like bro you're next your birthday's in two months bro i know i heard your dad i'm like no way he's like yeah bro so it's 16th birthday it's a wednesday night i'm, I'm pulled in school tomorrow this is me so fucking sick my new car i i'm not making this up i swear to God. my dad hands me the gift and i figured you know you're not gonna put you know put a picture of a car so i figured the keys, keys were yeah. in the box and it was like a box <laughs> like this and i'm like you crazy dad i open up and i swear to you, it was a bike seat oh because <laughs> i rode bikes it was a bike seat it was some bike seat that had like suspension on it dude i open up and i started crying and my dad goes you were yeah he goes oh, hey dad my, my, my dad goes oh, i didn't think it'd be this big of a deal it's just a bike seat but i'm like <laughs> My oh. son appreciates it. <laughs> my parents. I call my friend Joy. I'm like, I call my friend Joy. I'm like, I'm not getting a car, man. It's, He's like, what do you give him? Like a bite seat. He goes, oh, that's cold. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> my, my parents were the, the, they were the world heavyweight champion of bad gifts. The world heavyweight champion. Mm -hmm. They'd gone to, my dad traveled a lot. They're in Switzerland. I'm like, you're going to bring me back a Swiss army knife because all I care about is knives. I'm I'm nine, so how cool is this? Yeah, I got plans because yeah. I'm gonna go out camping. And yeah. all. It's, You're not gonna do shit, but yeah. Of course, I, but yeah. the only thing in my head is Swiss Army knife. Yeah. You know, I want the thick one because it, that's all. And they brought me back a fucking sweatshirt. My mother, <laughs> my mother used to. Uh, you think There's I'm kidding? Worse. My mother used to wrap lamps oh. from the attic, in, so I had something to unwrap. <laughs> I can't. I can't. My father gave me his shit. So like my yeah. father would oh, be like, you know, oh, like this chain, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Happy birthday, man. Like, oh, but... I had that from when I was a teenager. <laughs> I'm like, this is cheap. I didn't realize. Like I thought it, he was being sentimental, but it was yeah. cheap shit. Yeah. What's your dad's <laughs> like, one day, chain. Yeah. you're going to have this yeah. coat. <laughs> This coat. <laughs> We're in New York. Hey, at least you oh, knew, oh. though. My dad grew up in the Bronx. I grew. I was born in Yonkers, yeah. and then I've always been like a Westchester kid. Right. You know, always, always right outside the city and shit. But my father is. Uh, my parents got divorced. When I was five. My father's a one hundred percent. Like I know people have talked about their Sicilian fathers. I know Sebastian's yeah. talked about it. Yeah, we heard it all the Chrissy time. Chrissy D talks about it. Yo, my father is another motherfucker. How so? My father is old school. Sicilian. I mean, my father is. Like he, uh, he, you're not a man to him if you don't have like shoes and a watch that pop. Oh, I'm with you. My father oh, just, my father would go to a pizzeria. I told a story the other day. My father would walk into a pizzeria like eleven hundred dollar Gators, and a fucking I love and, you, a, and a shirt. And he had these. My father had big gaudy sunglasses oh, even in the, in when it's dark. Yeah, you know, and he just had he'd the fuck fucking, around. He just had the fuck. Yeah, me and him was, would get along. We would be in a, that's, we'd be that's in a car. Italian. We'd be in a car, and he'd go look Italian. at this. He'd go look at this. It's a grown man in a Toyota. My dad goes like this, you believe this? That's a grown, that's a grown man. That's a, that's a grown man. That's a grown man. What's this guy, what, what's this guy doing? That guy's a grown man. clown. Yeah, yeah, like like clown. clown. Is, he I need to meet your dad. Yeah, well, drinking beer, tattoos, all that to him was, was yeah, yeah. like that shit yeah, not was like, yeah, not, no not like, yeah, it Peasant. needed to be, it needed to be like. Artie Lang's you know. dad wouldn't let you open his Cadillac door if you had rings on. You go, you got rings on? Let me open the door. You can scratch the paint. Yeah. yeah that, like, that, my, my grandfather was 100% Sicilian. So oh, I, wow. I, I, the, the idea of what a man was yeah. and class. Yes. Like the, all what happened stuff. to those people? Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that, to me, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what it should I think, be. Yeah, I, love that, I love you that did you, there's, a very, there's a real discipline to the Southern Italian kind of like mm -hmm. a culture. There's a, yeah. there's a, there, are, yeah. there are It's not so much that there are rules. There are principles that you never break, right? Uh -huh. Like it's like laws. What is that? That old thing. Laws are for regular people, but there are rules, and yeah. you yeah. never break rules. Yeah. So, so, There's also a sense of respect, dude. Oh like, yeah, man. I would never leave the house in sweats. No. You're never gonna see me on sweats. No. Never. No. You would get mad, like because I was just a kid. Like, see, my dad would talk to me 
at a very young age the way you sh you should talk to an adult. Yeah. He treated me and my brother like that, but almost like detrimental. Like you mm -hmm. know, he would always he would just say things like yeah, like you know, my parents got divorced, got divorced, and he'd be like, yeah, man, your mother, you know, she just she, she turned evil. <laughs> <laughs> like the oh, devil shit. invaded us. <laughs> the devil invaded the house. Yeah, that's my mom. You know, like, and I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm, I gotta go home. <laughs> I live here. <laughs> Like, I'm, I gotta go sleep yeah, with the devil. I gotta go. The devil's <laughs> taking care of me tomorrow. I fucking the devil love sent me. it. The he, devil's made like, my you know, fucking you know, lunch. I don't like it. <laughs> Your mom is you know, evil. She, they went crazy. So, you, you know, she went crazy. It happens sometimes. And, uh, you know, we would have a good night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good night. Yeah, and I was like, so it was like 19, and you know, Divorce for Sicilians is like it's like 1982. Oh, fuck man, yeah, they, they don't do it. No, 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 no. no. Stay together. You stay together, man. Yeah, it was against the church. It was against the whole culture. Like family was everything. Sundays, you had you. Yeah. Sundays in my grandparents' house, you sat down. There was a whole meal. There was a whole that. way. Yeah, Love yeah. It. But it was number always, one thing for my dad though. Um, so, like, and in, in the 80s, the courts didn't give the the man the. You know, it was tough for the father, and, and still is. It still is, but like my father got like eleven, like no, no abuse, no cheating, just a bad, bitter divorce, and my father got eleven hours a week with me and my brother. Fuck. So he had he had eight hours on Sunday. He would pick us up on Sunday at 11 noon. Eleven hours a week. He would pick us up mm -hmm. Sunday at noon, and he would drop us off after dinner at eight, and then we were with him on Wednesday from five to eight. That so my, my my relationship with my father is like you know my father's down south now. He moved after which is a whole other story. My father moved after seventy years in the Bronx. He's in West Palm Beach, Florida, and he keeps calling me to tell me how different Florida is. <laughs> So he'll just go, Paul, Paul. And my dad gets real big with intros. How you doing? My dad, my dad, hey, how you doing? Good, good. Everything's good. He always starts out, everything's good. Listen, listen. Like he answers four questions that weren't asked to him. Paul, how you doing? Good. Everything's good. And he always tells me where he is. I'm still down here in Florida. I mean, he moved there. I'm down here in Florida. He goes, listen, it's fucking hot down here. Got fucking lizards running around. It's like, it's like the National Channel. National Channel. It's fucking hot. They got spiders down here, like like prehistoric. The, that, that's my. I'm being dead. Like this is really? not for the podcast. This is not to be funny. This is not to be funny. This, this is, is my. Fa this is my father, man. Like to the like my father. You know, like old. But he's like night. Like he's like nice racist. Yeah. You know, like he's just like it's just he's like he's grandfathered in. Where yeah, it's just, like, yeah. just because of the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. But I've seen him with all different cultures and he's sure. fine. Yeah. But he's just it's just like the neighborhood. He he grew up basically. Like in a Bronx tale. Yeah. So it was like that. Oh, shit. Where, where, my, my grandfather grew up in Bensonhurst. That was my mother. No, he grew up in the Bronx near, like, actually on the border of, like, uh, uh, Yonkers. Like, he grew up near, like, Arthur Avenue and, yeah, and yeah. shit like that. But he just has that. <laughs> You know, like his, my father still can't believe Obama was president. <laughs> he talks about that like you believe that shit. He talks about it like it was Katrina. Like, you it was believe that like, like, like my father would be like, "You believe that happened in this country?" <laughs> You're like, Dad, I'm glad your grandfather's dead. He didn't have to see that rest of soul. Like that's the shit. And I'm just like, oh, oh you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't mean yeah, no And then he'll be like, "No, no, I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be. Yeah, but you're. I'm not trying to be. I just think that there's certain things a black man should be allowed to do. We we keep everything nice together." Like he'll say some wild shit and then just try to push and him. No, no, I'm saying it's about family, though. What did he do for a living? He was in uh, he's car insurance, real estate, yeah. and he always had cash. He was just one of those. Oh, my grandfather always cash. Yeah, always and like cash. is that is that a thing? Actually, money like, clip. Yeah, yeah never yeah. credit money, cards. Money credit cards for suckers. You pay you pay a thing. So he always had cash. Always, always but, cash. Now kids, it's but, like cash. Like yeah, but dude, yeah, here's the thing. That, so what he cared about though, what he cared about most was and my father always want me meals food right and and he would get a restaurant for us on sunday because he's with his boys and we would yeah. always go to like a nice restaurant but my father could be real rough on wait staff right so i'm actually i want to put this in the new hour because he he couldn't handle that i brought my family here on sunday my kids who i don't get to see it needs to be right right yeah. so like veal he was big veal Mm -hmm. But he likes it big. It needs to be a big cut, right? <laughs> so if it comes out small, me and my brother could see him look, right? And and if the and, and his first bite <clears throat> will dictate the rest of the evening. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> my father makes my father makes sound effects when, when when my father makes noises and shit when he eats. So, so if it's good, he just go, he'll go, oh, 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 like you know, like that. Yeah, yeah. One time I knew it was bad, right? I knew it was. He just goes, he goes. And he puts it in his mouth, and me and my brother saw, and I'm like, dude, I should go to the bathroom, man. Like, this is not gonna. And he just goes, 
Oh no! And dropped. It sounded like Pesci. Remember before Pesci got yeah. shot? Yeah. Oh, right no. he goes, oh That's what he did. He dropped the fork. You just hear. Oh no! <laughs> and, and like yeah, he. And then he'll go to the waiter and be like, "Listen, it's son." He actually said one time, he goes, "I brought my family here. I can't." <laughs> I brought my family here. Yeah. Like, Bro, that, that, is like that waiter gives a fuck. Oh, yeah. like, that waiter gives a fuck. That is like it's You're like stop the world. The cutlet insults my honor. <laughs> insults the way I've been living my life. Yeah. So that. So that's who like I kind of grew up with. Actually, not really. I was five and then like that's who I kind of older or younger is, brother my brother Christian is five years older oh dope you know a good example of Sicilians is that like my grandmother always say what's right is right you know what's yeah. wrong is wrong it's very simple like they're very the things and so yeah they, they, didn't, they stopped going to the church a long time ago they stopped they yeah. just stopped they're like nobody was religious you know nobody nobody it, but they're Catholic so oh, right. even though my grandparents my parents stopped going to the church there's no church there's no praying there's nothing there's a crucifix there's a crucifix in your room. And when I was 13, the priest came to the house to give me my confirmation. Oh, wow. So regardless, even though still, nobody you know, really believes in going to church or even uh, nobody talks about Jesus Christ, hmm. I still had to get confirmed. It's like a culture. It tradition? Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's, it's, my, it's, it's culture is culture, man. Yeah. I got baptized as, as Greek because my mother's 100% Greek. Oh, wow. And my dad, like, there was no, like, you know, the, the dunked in the water and all that stuff. But uh, <laughs> and my son, Lucas, and my son, Lucas and Sophia, uh, my son and daughter, Lucas and Sophia, my dad said, you know, like you just said, my dad said to me, and he said it as serious as you could imagine. He uh -huh. was dead serious. He goes, Paul, you know, I didn't hear anything about a christening or a baptiz baptism. And he just goes, you know, I just want to tell you something. It's really important. And my father would always say to me, you got you understand what I'm saying to you? He would always say something. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying to you? You understand? And I go, yeah. And he goes, listen. He goes, you know, if, if they're going to make it to heaven. <laughs> No, 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 exactly. no, 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 exactly. as, as serious as, as if you told somebody that they had stage four kids, he said to me, he goes, you know, if, if you want them, if they got to get into heaven, this needs to happen. So that's exactly like, what the no, that's, that's dead ass. Like my, my, my grandmother and my grandfather said yeah. to my sister when she had her baby, she, my, they said, they said, get the kid baptized. And yeah. uh, my sister goes, but you're not, what do you mean? You're not, when was the last time we were in church? She goes, I know. Just in case, because, you know, <laughs> because they might, because sometimes there's a chance they could be in limbo. <laughs> oh, in limbo. What? In limbo. Yeah. limbo. Yeah. So you're not in, you're not in limbo. heaven or hell. Yeah, we don't want confusion you, up there. You yeah. <laughs> you, if you haven't been like baptized, purgatory. you'll be, no yeah, you'll be in limbo. This way, there's no confusion yeah, you know when they get the to the gate. You're the kid in limbo, you know. You're the kid waiting outside in line, everybody else getting yeah. in. These yeah. are not superstitious people, by the way. They, but to them, they were like, that's, it, that's a very important thing. It's, a, it's it's you like a vaccination in card into heaven. I would, like, it. I, think, I, I would do it. They pointed up to an area. Like yeah. Yeah, it might be in limbo. They, they went like this. Like there's a you don't want waiting. You don't like, want waiting. Now you're, now you're spinning around, and you, all you had to do is have your head wet. Just spinning around. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, he was. I like sometimes. I wish if it was recorded. I, I my dad is so over the top with some things that I feel like I would get canceled. Oh, yeah. oh, really? Because he's yeah. my father. Like, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. did nothing. He's, he's, I'm just like, yeah. I, don't, I, I visited him for a living yeah. But like, yeah. he's just, oh, dude, my father You got is, an association. Is oh, dude, my father says, my father's hilarious. My father, you see what they did to Trump? You see this? And I'm like, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not really watching. I'm just, you watch your kids. Watch your kids. And I, just, I just try to divert. Like, yeah. I just try to divert. Otherwise, I just try to divert. How long has he been in Florida? Uh, he's been in Florida for like two years now. Oh, okay. Oh, and, so fresh. And, yeah, fresh. So yeah. It's, it's, it's new and it's new for him. So he wants to talk to us and, and tell us. But here's the thing. I know I'm painting a picture of like this. He's like this, like educated and like so nice. Like mm -hmm. if he met you, he would, it would be like, oh my God, how yeah. you doing? Oh, like, you're friends yeah. with my son. Like he's just, it's just like a, it's just like this instilled thing that they have from the neighborhood passed down from generation to generation. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's what he, yeah. but like never like Keep talking, kind I, gotta, of, I gotta pee or I'm gonna die. Oh, we take a break. Good. Yeah, we take a break. He said I gotta pee. I love I'm gonna pee. Tight squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take another break with our boy Paul Verzi. Cause one thing that got me started riding bikes on the road was doing it in my garage on the Peloton. I love the Peloton. They have world-class instructors, dope music, endless fitness variety. I never get sick of it. Peloton has created an on-match fitness experience to keep my thick ass motivated workout after workout. They Robin's my favorite. You can do the weights. They got dope music, cardio, and strength. Like I said, the weights. You can get one subscription for the whole squad. The whole family can share one bike. Their all-access membership is more like a family plan with no additional cost. 
the classes for every level beginner. They have Tabata programs. Peloton meets you every step of your fitness journey. As you progress, choose from a wide range of cycling classes that meet your level, keep you challenged every time you clip in. All right. Limitless class variety, endless variety, live. I like to do it live. They have plus live and on demand strength yoga, stretching classes. They have weights. They got it all. Get started on your Peloton journey right now. Go to onepeloton.com to learn more. That's Z O N E P E L O T O N dot com. One Peloton. If you're a business owner, you probably know exactly what you do with an extra day in each week. Maybe launch a new website, spend more time marketing your services, or find new, more way, creative ways to build your brand, but you don't need an extra day. What you really need is Fiverr. F I V E R R, your one stop shop for world class freelance talent. With Fiverr, all the freelancers you could ever need are right at your fingertips. Fiverr connects business like yours with freelancers offering hundreds of digital services so you can stop feeling overwhelmed, start growing your business. Uh, Fiverr's global network of on-demand freelance talent is here to help. Whether you're launching your first business, scaling your current business, or in need of extra support, graphic design, copywriting, marketing, web program, film editing, scoring music, you got a YouTube channel, whatever you got, you're going to find your talent and begin working on your project within minutes. What you're going to find, it's instant. It's easy. 24-7 customer service. Pricing is always project-based, not hourly. All right, check out Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Receive 10% off your first order by using the code FIGHTER. Find all the digital services you need in one simple place. That's F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Code FIGHTER. Again, that's Fiverr.com, code FIGHTER. Back from a hot piss break? Back from a hot piss break, guys. I got to meet your father. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to. No, he's he would be. You would be like, oh my god, he's like the nicest. Yeah, he's I, just I just, nice. just love it. Like we've been all in Florida energy. so much, so I'm surprised we didn't run into. Him. I know, right? Yeah, we've been I will, in Florida I more will. times than we want lately. Like I can't. I like I, I keep laughing in my head about these grown man at the Toyota. Yeah, I was I'll tell you guys a story if you guys want. I'll tell you guys a story. I was gonna. I always had this story. Giannis alluded to it a little bit on Rogan, but it's my it's my story. But he kind of got into something. My father. This is one. 100% true, and I've never told the full story on a podcast. If you want to hear my father's please, talk, please. this is 100% true now. This yeah. is not bullshit. In 1973, my father, my mother, my grandmother, and my aunt saw a UFO over Yon in Yonkers, <laughs> and it was all over, and my father's version of it might be the funniest thing that my father first of all my fa my father saw a fuck all right this, this is this is real my mother your real. father and ufo together is just i'm, I'm locked in yeah so i'm i'm not even a thought it's 1973 my mother was pregnant with my brother christian my uh -huh. mother was like 22 years old right my grandmother uh yaya is what they call it, your mm -hmm. greek grandmother she has little you know house in yonkers and she had a, a lot and and it was like to start the sun started going down and there was like a tv room and my father hears my grandmother, mother, and aunt going, oh my God, what is this? Like, what, what is this? Tommy, get out here. You got to get out here. So my, fa and my father told me and my brother this from young and still to this day says he wish he didn't see what he saw, but he knows what he saw. And let me start off by saying my father said that anybody he, before this point that said they saw a UFO or aliens, he thought that they were Bullshit. crazy hillbillies that just wanted attention. He thought that they were mentally ill. And he said that. He goes, I thought these people were all fucking crazy. <laughs> Paul, I saw, so he goes outside and he says he sees over the thing, they said it's low. And it was actually all over newspapers the next day. Says it was a, a low, silent, silent fucking thing. And he said it had like a blue, like a, a tin blue thing. And he said there was like little portholes or something around. And he said he's looking at this thing and he said, they're just fucking staring at it and he's going, what the fuck? It's not making noise. And he got real like scared. And he's going, oh my, he said to him, he said, he goes, I felt like I could either throw a rock or if I had one of my shotguns. And then he goes, but then he goes, I know these things could read your fucking mind. <laughs> so I got scared. I was thinking it. So I ran back in the fucking house and I started looking out the window. He's like, because I'm not having those fucking things take me out. <laughs> so he goes back outside, right? And he said, and he says, he goes, Paul, I swear to God, he's like, I would never lie to you and your brother. And he's still, he's never changed the story. And pe he's still to this day, he said, in one fucking second, it turned into a dot. He said in one second, uh -huh. this thing turned into a star. And he swears to God. it took off? But he's going, he's going, Paul, I'm seeing, I'm looking at this fucking flying saucer. And it's in here, and I haven't heard somebody say saucer. flying saucer since I got fucking ice cream at Carvel. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's going, I'm fucking, he goes, I'm looking at this flying fucking saucer. I can't believe it. He goes, Mars, yeah, he keeps Mars going, attack. He keeps going, I know, he's right? going like a flying what saucer. And he's going, this thing wasn't from this fucking world. I could promise you that. That's what he kept saying. Whatever the fuck, he goes, whatever the fuck that thing was, it was not from this world. I promise you. I would never lie to my boys. I thought those people were crazy, this and that. So it's 1973. Uh -huh. So he tells my mother. You know, it's Sicilian. He goes, you don't fucking tell anybody. Oh, man, the you don't fucking tell anybody. <laughs> They're going to think we're fucking crazy. You don't, I don't. And like, it was like a code yeah, of yeah, like, yeah. like now, when like, now that it's out, yeah, it's my father always goes, I don't, I knew. <laughs> he goes, my father, I fucking knew. He goes, I don't care what they're doing. I've always known. And like, it's, it's actually really true. So my father was, uh, before, I probably wouldn't be in comedy if my parents had get divorced. My dad was like a big wig at AIG down the city. Mm -hmm. They were looking at an eight hundred thousand dollar home in nineteen eighty two. Right now, it's wow. worth like, right now it's worth so like, you know what you AIG know, five is? million. AIG, mm -hmm. AIG, AIG, AIG would provide insurance to insurance companies. Right? Okay. I mean, yeah. They, yes. They were, yeah. And he was like really, dollar and they went they went belly up during the, the crisis, right? They, they didn't, they didn't they, yeah, I think yeah, I think. But yeah, like this is like nineteen nineteen seventy my dad they is were like huge. Just out of college and he's he's like he's like they loved him and he was like the guy and he's making money and my father was really bad. I think this is what my mom I I guess I want I want to say they were just different. You know, my dad would want to come home like a fur coat, get her a fur coat. My dad would want to wear a Rolex, get her a Rolex. My mom didn't care about that shit. My dad was very much like, we're gonna take over, we're gonna get a boat. That's how he showed love. We're gonna get a fucking we're gonna get a mm -hmm. castle. We're gonna get a boat. Like my father thought that that was what it was. So he said they're at a barbecue for AIG. And they're they they go, they drive down to Long Island and all the companies there, and it's the 70s and everyone's having a good time. And my mother goes, Tommy, come here. Let's tell, remember we saw the flying saucer? <laughs> tell everybody the time. And my, my dad oh, no. flipped, like flipped, like, like just made my mom look crazy. He goes, oh, she's, we, we don't know what we saw. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck I told you, these are my bosses. These are my boss, they're gonna think I'm fucking crazy. Yeah. And, but he did tell me, he told me that, um, and the way he described it was so funny, but he told me that it bothered him that he saw it and that he wished that he didn't because he's still, like Fucked he up. knew for the whole time, like during this, that, that there was something else out, like he knew. And like, it's fucking insane. so now that, that it's out and pilots and the, yeah. our government is going, yeah, that's not from yeah, this boy. world. He, he always knew, but he told me, he sat down, me and my brother, he's like, it, it's out there. And like, we saw it. And then my mom, who's very kind of religious and Christian and remarried, we were like, mom, is it, is it, uh, is it true? And, and Giannis, Papa's got so fucking into this. He was like, yo, did your, your mom, I know your dad, but did your mom see? So like he came over to a family thing. He went up to my mom. He goes, did, did Paul tell me, did, did you really see that? And my mom, who's even religious, she's like, she said, I have to say, she's like, yeah, we saw it. Like, you don't see something yeah. floating over your head and then it turns into a fucking star in, a, in an instant like, and, and, and say, I didn't see that. Like, yeah. or like try to, it, it is what it is, religious or not, you saw what you saw. Yeah. So, uh, and, and he, he said it just stayed there. <clears throat> he said it, it the, the, the two things that were consistent always was that it, it was silent. It was silent, just hovering there, and then it was, and it turned into a, a, a star See, the, in the, the sky. The government's still not saying it's aliens. They're saying it's a, it is a UFO, which means unidentified flying, flying object. object. Yeah. So they're saying we're they're saying we're not Some confirming kind of it's aliens. Yeah. We're saying it could be a military drone, could be from China, might be our military, could be an alien. We don't know. But that Jackie Gleason story too. I mean, that mm -hmm. that I think that I don't think that that's a lie. You know, you heard the thing about Jackie. No. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jackie Gleason was was wife wrote a autobiography, and she said he came home one. He was cl very close with Nixon. He was very close with Nixon. You know what they called Jackie Gleason? Because you're young, him? the great, great one. one. They called him the great one. They did. He was he was he was the honeymooners. He was the star of the honeymooners. He mm -hmm. was in all the Burt, Burt Reynolds. He was one of the greatest comedic comedic actors. Maybe the greatest comedic actor Bring of all time. And they actually say I mean, they actually say that what his stand up, they said there was no video or audio I bet at the he time. Was a they monster. said he walked into a fucking oh. they said he walked into a comedy club and would just fucking grab the mic and just light him up. He uh, He was in how about him and the hustler? What did he, oh the, how, I heard he had, he would have like they said he would have like twelve scotches throughout the day, eat steaks all day, smoke, and the doctor was like and he was like, oh, This yeah. is how I need to he, he ended up getting he ended up facts. getting to, to seventy one. Yeah. But he was like that's so he was he was they called him the great one. They so so wow. what did he say to Nixon? So so him and Nixon were very, very close. I, be, I believe it was Nixon and his wife said <clears> uh, he came home pale as a ghost one time, and he said they took me to a naval base, and I saw them doing some shit on on a living creature on something that was not from here, and uh, and, he, and that's a, that's a story. That's a famous story yeah. that he was close to. They put him down in a naval base, and uh, and he saw some shit that uh, oh, weren't Gleason. weren't meant for us to see. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to be brought down there. <laughs> I don't want. I'd love to be seeing that shit. I'm all I'm all in. Yeah. I'm oh, all you'd want to see it? Oh hell yeah. yeah. You'd want to see I, it? I, 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 the presidents know what's up. 
yeah. Hard uh, uh, on our on our podcast, Burgos Verse, what would you say to them? And I was like, he's like, I go, yeah, I would just try to talk to him. And I and I, I, I just go, yo, you guys, everything good? And he goes, first of all, he goes, you can't start with yo. <laughs> Burgos, really, you gonna start with Fair slang? <laughs> he goes, yo, what to do? <laughs> no, but I, what, what would you say? Do, like, baby. If, if the alien came out, I would be, I put my hands up to yeah. just be like, yo, yeah. dude, I'm. You know, yeah. what's weird, we automatically, because of movies and books, we automatically assume they're just evil as fuck. They might be really cool. Yeah, they might they be. They might be dope. They, they, they yeah. say that the idea would be that they're a higher life form so that they are. They look know, at us like we're very, Yeah, we're very primitive. It'd be like. They're like, look yeah. at these fucking yeah. idiots. It's like the way we look at chimpanzees. Yeah. You know what you don't do with a chimp, bub? What? You know what you do? Tell me. Real look quick thing. Yeah. No. Nope. What do you not do to a chimp? Turn your back? No. Nope. Uh, what's a sign of aggression? What's a sign Yell? of real aggression? What? Yell? No. no. Uh, Showing your teeth? Yeah. Smiling. Oh, Don't yeah. do this to a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> you do that shit? No, they say like, wolves too. Hi. You're like, yeah. hi. Chimps are like, oh, it's like on. And chimps are like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and they bite your face. That, you uh, make that mistake that all the time. Cool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That comedian oh, uh, Joe do. Zimmerman, you know Joe Zimmerman, he's a comic. He uh, his his album was called <laughs> "Smiling at Wolves" because that's the same thing with them. Anytime they, anytime those oh, yeah. predator, you uh, know, they see that shit. They yeah. do that. They go. Uh, he uh, his "Smiling at Wolves" and he's it's uh, yeah. I don't ever want. I'm not into the fucking those shit like the, that. The you just got to know how to talk to him. It's like the guy was training bears, grizzly bears. <laughs> bears. I go, how, how do you know? And he goes, yeah, they tell you if they're gonna attack you if they're in a bad mood. I go, how? He goes, grizzly bears click their jaw. And you just know to get the fuck out of there. Okay. That's what they do. Oh, oh, okay, fuck. just listen According to this guy. Yeah, listen to the click. Yeah, no click. Listen so we're good. Get the kids. <laughs> the bear's not clicking. Get the kids. Get the kids. The bear's not clicking today. We're gonna take pictures. <laughs> I didn't hear a click. Get the camera. Bring the baby. There's no click. Bring the baby. We got a five minute window. Matter of fact, let the grizzly hold the baby. He's yeah. not clicking. Well, <laughs> fucking Yellowstone. How many? How many fucking Japanese tourists? Their kids get killed because they put their fucking kid on top of the fucking bison. The buffalo. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it out, take a one, one girl got flipped by a, a oh, yeah. bison. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Not too long ago. To yeah. Don't go fuck. up to them. Did you see that cougar going at that hiker in Utah? Yeah. That was that scared me. Is that man. recent? Because that yeah, was, was probably like like yeah, six you, months. You've seen it. Yeah. Those the bikers and it, it, it ate the one friend. No, no, no. no, no this is just one guy oh, walking hiking. He was hiking. You see that one though. Oh, that guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the he guy's going, like, and he was like yelling ah, at it. But he was like, don't call it, bro. Yeah, he was going, bro, I swear to God, yeah. bro. He's, He's going, like, don't that. fucking do it. Please. Yeah. But I would, I like, I was scared for that Did guy. Did you hear the bikers in Washington? They were riding their bikes and they saw like a, it was a starving mountain lion. Uh, and so they were like, oh, we're going to stop. And they say, get real big and bring, so they put their bikes oh, up yeah, there. I'm, and the mountain lion was like, oh, fuck yeah. These guys stop. And it killed them. Start both. attacking the one, fucking them all up. The friend goes, fuck this noise. I'm gonna go get help. Also, leave you hanging because mountain lion's eating your ass first. Yeah. He goes You're running. Go get help. And the mountain lion goes, "Oh, cool. You want to run? Well, I like to chase. So I'm gonna leave this guy here. Goes after the guy that went to run to get help. Also, ditch his friend. Eats him alive. Ugh. Another guy gets back, and then the cops come in. They see the mountain lion. They see the guy. They, the mountain lion dragged the guy up into the tree. What? They found, yeah, they found like his head. And Damn. It, Kill the mountain lion. What the fuck? That's like that's like. Yeah. Did you see? Because you can't turn Nova your back. Scotia. That's what they say. Don't no, shit. run. The guy, the guy. I think yeah. it's somewhere out near Edmonton. He's running. He's jogging, and a mountain lion just comes out of nowhere. It comes at him, and he goes whoa, 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 and sprays the fuck out of it, and then goes Arr! like that. It's, it's on YouTube. I think it's crazy. They don't they don't fuck around. A mountain lion, 150 pound mountain lion, is not a good time. Did well, you hear about the guy who ride my bike during pandemic? I see all sorts of animals, and I saw a fucking bobcat. Oh yeah, and even that was alarming. Oh, yeah. The fucking yeah. poles were. Oh yeah, like this. yeah, yeah. No, that's scary. Shit. Wait, what about um? Yeah, there you go. Did you see the video of the guy it's choking out that it's choked them out and line out? This guy's running. Two cougars up here. The man behind the camera phone is Donnie Stone. The thirty-five. <laughs> Why is he smiling? Like that? <laughs> what the fuck? He's God, he sent God. those in. <laughs> Gorgeous Malorius, right. man. Yeah, doesn't the producer all... tell you which ones to stand? Yeah. Part in events. He sent those. Race and Sinister Seven. He said <laughs> runners are given tips to deal. Stay in the a noise from behind. Hush! <laughs> Hush! Get out of here! It went from like being ecstatic to seeing them <laughs> to being like really scared. I just saw, I saw it. Cougars up here. Dr. Mark Boyce, an ecology. That was it, though, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I would never go into Although, some shit like that without yeah. a rifle or a gun. Uh, Not even, thank I, you. Uh, 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 if there's grizzlies in the area or cougars that seem to like humans, mm, going out there with my gun. I gotta yeah. have a pistol on. Got it. Yeah, you guys well, know Bobby. Kelly. You know Bobby Kelly. Yeah, Bobby, yeah. no he, of him. He, he, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's a dear. Yeah, he's, he's a dear. He's a dear friend of mine, and he wants Such to go like camp, camp, camping and shit, and like, 
you know, I was Bobby like, does. That's not. I don't see Bobby. No, he loves. He loves to. Like he was like, you know, and we went, dude, and it was. I fucking hated every minute of it. Like, <laughs> I was freezing. Dude, I'm the tent. same he fucking was in way. A fucking I'm the same I way. Hi- I go hiking. I mean, hunting with Rogan, and I. Can't, we're both. It's is that meters? So cold. Yeah, yeah, we're on meters, and we're in the Missouri. Uh, the uh, Missouri breaks or whatever it's called, and you're you're up in Montana, and it's fucking the middle of what nowhere and i just you wake up and you're sleeping the shit tent on the ground your body's not used to it and you're fucking freezing, freezing. Uh-uh. you're no, freezing right hard pass. and i just hear broken i can just hear him going, <laughs> i can hear <laughs> <laughs> he's in the tent and i just hear his teeth going <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i go he was so cold. And his lips. His lips. His, his lips he's got the biggest skin, lips in the world. And he's going like this. He's going. He's listening to us. And he's and he's going. His whole face is going. Shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> as he's trying to talk. And he's acting normal. Going. I just mm-hmm. hear him as he's like. <laughs> I have no desire. Uh, yeah, uh, no no just, desire. I just hear him go. Yeah, I just hear him go. Fucking camping. He goes camping blows. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, hey, amen, motherfucker. Well, I thought he was all scared for me because I was, you know, I see rattlesnakes and there's yeah. not mines where I bike ride. And he goes, uh, you have a knife? I go, no, no, fucking knife. He goes, you need to do something. So I go to the studio. The, the fucking machete. I'm like, well, I can't. I can't ride my bike <laughs> with a, fu- I'm not a, a fucking knight from the fucking medieval times, dude. I'm on a bike, bro. I had my bro. broadsword in all time. <laughs> like, yeah. It was a joust. <laughs> fucking... I bought a Swiss Army knife, right? Like, I just went to the store and got, like, basic shit. And when I got there, I got a steak. I got a stick. And I'm... I, like I did one of those things yeah. and Bobby goes yeah dude I saw the movie The Edge too <laughs> <laughs> remember The Edge yeah. with Alex well, Alex well, well, great movie <laughs> like Anthony the way the fuck you think that's you think that's gonna work Where is it? I go I gotta have something here cause I wanted to bring he's like you can't bring a rifle you can't I was like nah. there's animals there yeah, there's yeah. An- yeah. I'm done dude I don't no. do it fuck you that. did it one time huh and I, and I said to him I, he was like let's go again and I was like yeah cause like him and like Ari and them were like they all go out and like they had like a whole and I'm like let, and he's like I was like let's do a cabin I was like, I'll do a cabin, and then we'll go cabin. fishing. He's like, yeah, nah, you know, he don't want to do it. So I was no, like, I'm, I'm not, not into it. They want to sleep on that fucking ground. I can't do it. I did it one time, Mount, and I fucking hated it. It's not for mountain it. lions. Don't worry, I just worry about grizzly bears. Nah, bears. you see a mountain lion, they'll fucking scare the shit out of you. I'll tell you what scared the fuck out of me and, and my family was uh, when we went to Montana last year. We saw a moose, like a oh, straight yeah. up yeah, that scare you. moose. That scare oh well, they're fucking Uh-oh. enormous. They're yeah. huge. And yeah. my son, he's used to seeing them on cartoons and books. Like, Dad, let's get out. And the guy driving goes, no, no, no you don't want to, you don't want to get out because we had no. a problem last season with yeah. that. They killed. And I go, problem. And she goes, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you later. I don't scare the kids. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, and snakes get- for me, dude. Snake. That's that's well, it. Well, I mean, a pit viper is not fun to get bit by, right? No, the um, the, these these rattlesnakes that I see, the first one I ever saw, it, it was based out of that movie Anaconda. It, it, this thing was fucking enormous. They, they get pretty big, and I'm not used to them. I was. When I first started, I'd see him every day, and I was so scared. And then eventually, like, oh, they're just chilling. Think about a fucking They're not, like, coming at yeah. you. Mm-hmm. They're literally just chilling. Hopefully, you don't run over one with the right. bike, but you, they're, they're just doing their Think thing. Think about a mean Dude, dog. Think th- about a mean dog. I wore a bite yeah. suit. And, and yeah. the, in Afghanistan, they let these Malinois after us. Yeah. Dude, they bite, even when you have a bite suit, they bite so fucking hard. And, and they they're pull so you, right? Strong. Oh, dude, that's a... 80 pound dog what 70 kind of dog? pound dog Belgian Malinois they kind of look like German Shepherds yeah. but it, on keto. and they're a skinny dog they're keto German Shepherds yeah. they're now, now take a 150 pound mountain lion or a wolf or a fucking bear that, that fucking thing thousand. came up and bit that thing will those, fuck those you those things up. will fuck that'll it that'll shut you down look at the picture that for <laughs> <laughs> it it's adorable if you're as big as Brennan you could probably you, can, you can absorb I, it I had that one trained like you, oh, you I had got that? it from the Navy SEALs yeah I don't think you would. Um, I don't think a uh, mountain lion would attack somebody as big as you. Actually, well, there's only one people. way to find out. And I don't. Yeah, know. but a bear would. A bear would be like, yum. Bear's like, okay. more meat. I'm, I'm, you see a mo- a real wild moose, like a yeah. fucking male yeah. moose, yeah. ten foot from fucking hoof to yeah. fucking antler. Yeah, you're not. They're insane. It's not hearing a peep at you. Look at that fucking no. thing. Oh, dude, no. it was a, it was the size of the fucking Escalade. Where this thing would have destroyed the fucking car. You see that anaconda that swallowed that dude? What? No. Yeah. Do you, in like Jakarta J- 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 or some shit like in, that? In India or something? Yeah, and yeah. I kind of swallowed a dude. Like, that they're from like, South America. If you I'm could, yeah, this, thing, this thing just swallowed a person. And it, it horrified me to this day. It, I can't. What a shit way to go. The sure worst. It was, anaconda? It was so, I mean, there's a picture. <clears throat> uh, there's a picture Is of this it? right here? No. That's it. 
Right oh, there. this one. Yeah, oh, I was a python, dude. God, that's that, a Burmese dog. python. Yeah, dude, they said that that's a person. Dude, that to me, so right a there. Python didn't that, actually eat a drunk guy in India. If that's if that's <laughs> not the most horrifying thing you've ever seen, I, I don't know what I don't know. Oh, that's, that's, that's terrifying. What's more horrifying? You know that's a body. I don't think yeah, that's, that's real though. There's one that there's a woman. The no, there, a there's woman a woman just yeah. like a month ago got eaten alive. What? Let yeah. me see the picture. Because oh, they're out, they're out there shit, farming. Dude. They're out there farming, oh. and then the water too. Oh, did I just Oh, it was Indonesia. Yep. Now hold on. Let's yes, see. I can't. The there, what did they, what did that's they what. Find, though? No way. Oh, dude. Indonesian dude. woman. Yeah. Twenty-three foot long python yeah. swallows Indonesian woman. That scares you, huh? Yeah, I don't even like to look. Yeah, you're all bunched up about it. I get it, dude. Dude. All right, it's off. I guess that was... <laughs> no, 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 I'm just hey, saying like... <laughs> apparently that woman had a mustache. Uh, she looks very... That man. was a man. Yeah, that, that looked like a man. That was a man It, it said yeah, Indonesian woman. It said woman, woman but yeah. she had a mustache. I don't know what they're doing know. There, you know? Go to some current events, Jim. Sure. Say some current events. Let me do one thing. So a retired nun who used to be the principal at a uh, private school here in California was recently arrested because she embezzled over eight hundred thousand dollars from the school so she can gamble in vegas no, okay. what a that's a gambling she, problem uh, that's a gambling problem <laughs> yep she got audited and what i thought was funny is that she is also being investigated with another nun that helped her and the nun was asian and i feel like because it's gambling and asians that the asian nun had everything to do with it <laughs> yeah. asians, love, asians love gambling asians love gambling yeah what is they like the my, slots right uh in vegas we love slots we love roulette we I love go. yeah exactly i don't know what it is but i think it has something to do with chinese new year and how we like to gamble to almost like test our luck throughout the year Ooh. that when you go to vegas it's like on steroids because i think yeah. the biggest e even, gambling even in miami in the world when i went to a hard rock cafe we walked through the casino yeah fucking China just asians cafe. galore just specifically boom, chinese boom, yes boom, boom. smoking sipping mm -hmm. boom, boom, one boom. of my brother's best friends and you always from got college. the ugliest white people can't, in the world chinese kid on, just on, loves on can't get well. enough can't get yes. enough of it just can't get enough just we wants can't. to goes goes to i don't get the tournaments. appeal i, I, I sit it's down there it's it, drives, it drives me crazy it's a real you look around and God. but you can see how it's addicting oh, i don't it's, it's a, no it's a real, addictive personality i don't you get the juice and you get that some people cannot stop i think i think if you go to a casino and like i won two grand once in one hand and I was just like, oh, dude, like that's that was like I bought yeah. a car. I was like, like bet on a, sports is so much better. Oh, uh, I know that's great. Yeah, having some action bet on, on an fights, NFL game. Nothing is, better. No, I'll no. bet on shit fights. It makes the fight so much better. I'll bet how, on how, 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 and shit. How do you do? What's your overall record? Uh, pretty good because because yeah. I work with DraftKings, right? So I got to look into it and then give picks because people oh, okay. are betting money on the picks. So I really look. But as it. an ex-fighter now, like and I'm interested in this shit. I know I'm sure you got asked a million times. No, so I don't mean to bore you with this shit, but. When you're watching these guys, like, can you tell when you're watching them walk to the before that you know when they're doing the certain whole thing guys, like this? When you see their eyes, and you see, guys, you could tell like, oh, this guy's either nervous. Certain or guys just, that I know. Oh, okay. If, if I have a personal relationship with him, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's gonna be like, a tough he doesn't, one he doesn't look good. He doesn't yeah, look. It doesn't 100%. look. Okay, so you could go. Especially when I'm really close to him, I'm like, ah, oh, man, he's about to get fucked up. And if you don't know him, you're it's a guess like like me. Yeah. Yep, hundred percent. What was the fight that you, that you felt really confident where you weren't that afraid? Roy Nelson and no, uh, no gear. Two you fights were, I lost. Yeah, and you were. I was like, I'm gonna steamroll both of them. Wasn't nervous. You weren't nervous. No, didn't go my way. No <laughs> gear was like, were, excuse me, so you should be nervous. He right were, in the face. They were so experienced. Mm. Still though. Yeah. That's got. See, that's some shit. Like, listen, I I had the pleasure of performing madison square garden and, and carnegie hall and shit and like you know you bomb that's tough but like i i think ufc i i still said that's the most ballsy shit to go in there knowing that you could just Possibly wake up going what happened yeah. that's the craziest or thing dead, is these man. motherfuckers get knocked out <clears throat> and then you just hear like he they just go they look at the they go what happened like, yeah you're just uh, like, they, I've, I've, yeah yeah i mean it's ballsy but at the same time it's also stupid it to me it, it takes more ballsy to stay at madison square garden and you know like that's a different animal getting put to sleep in front of your kids though man like when you I'm see I'm lucky because I didn't have kids. Though. Yeah, like I don't know why fighters. I know like for inspiration, but if they I have if, them ringside, if it was like yeah, and if it was, <laughs> yeah. if I would look at the Vegas odds, even on myself, I'd be like, like Daddy's, I'd be like, Daddy's I'm a, a plus eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a plus eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. We don't leave the wife. kids at home. Yeah, sweetie, yeah. don't don't let them watch the TV. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a plus eight hundred for a reason, sweetie. Yeah, it's video game night. Yeah, right. Tell tell him Daddy's going on vacation with his boys. I'm a plus eight hundred. We're not watching the fight tonight. Daddy's gonna get his ass whooped. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy's gonna get his ass whooped. I don't want the kids to see this. Uh -huh. <laughs>
<laughs> and you know how like my son would always say like if my son was like mad at me he knows what to hurt he'd be like well so maybe you're not that funny could you imagine being a ufc oh. fighter and you don't get your kid a video game he's like yeah well you got your ass whooped last week <laughs> 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 you made fuck you, <laughs> what kind of that? game was it what did you yeah, want you little fucker <laughs> It's so cut and dry, man. It's cut, so that, cut and dry. That's the thing. It's so that's the best way. It's oh. so cut and that's so dude. so is comedy though. It's pretty black and white. Yeah, it is. It's it is. Comedy you and either fighting. do well or you don't. Hundred percent. And when you don't, see, at least in fighting, if I'm doing bad, it's it, it's gonna be a short night, you know. And then yeah. I'm back in the locker room, like, all right, I'll work on my mistakes. Stand up. There's sets where you know if you have a full hour, you're 20 into it, and you know. You're just that's why did Teddy I was going through the mud, and you're like, I'm up yeah. here for 40, 40 more minutes, y'all. Like, let's let's try. Ted, to bring Teddy Allen said the ring is where, and any fighting arena, you, that's where the truth comes out. No matter what, you'll find out what the truth is. And I think stand up's the same way. Sounds like exactly. you're up there. You fucking you either have it or you don't. I don't mm -hmm. care who your agent is. I don't care what your talent is. And nothing you, drives me more nuts when a cop comes back saying it's got the fucking crowd, and I'm like. Oh. Oh, you think it's the crowd? Yeah. You're talking about the people that paid money yeah. to laugh? Oh, you think they're the problem? Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Bro. No, no, no. Yeah. There's only one common denominator. Do yeah. you think it's the crowd last week too? Right. No, right. It's not the crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Greg Fitzsimmons said it best. He's like, they're, if you're not, if they're there to laugh. So if they're not laughing, it's 100. percent you're 100. the problem. I agree with. I agree. 100. percent Yes. But well, this is like a headlining you. set. Like you have time to like. Dig yourself you can dig out, out. You can dig yeah. out of like yeah. areas. Like, I'll tell you, was it, you know? it was interesting when I did Miss Miss Pat. She, you know, I did a guest spot. On yeah, the show it was a predominantly black crowd. What's weird is, you know, my my fans. I'll, I'll mess around with some of those the the gay stuff. How my life would be easier if I was gay. And the the black crowd, they didn't. They do not. They did not play that game. They did not like the gay stuff. Hmm. But then the other stuff, they loved. They fucked with. Yeah, yeah, they loved. But the gay stuff, they just did not entertain. Everybody's got to do a black crowd. Yeah. I came up doing when I was coming up and no clubs would work. I was just new. I would do. I did the urban circuit. I did the black rooms contests, and it, it was like it was scary. But it's I had different, to do it, right? Man. Oh, it was, so, so I text. I text a girl because you know he knows Miss Pat, and he goes, "Swing big, swing for the fence with the black crowd." He's like, "Don't hold back, take big chances." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I would just had to do it and just see, and like you know, it was honest. Yeah, it's was the most honest reactions you you'll ever get. Yep. Yeah, because if they fuck with you, they fuck with you definitely heavy. Fuck with you, yeah. But if they don't. They'll let you fucking know. <laughs> yeah. Right there on the spot. I had one person go, preach! <laughs> yeah, preach. It's interactive. It's, it's talking about dick jokes, It's, it's a right? dope heckle, though. Yeah. It's it's preach! A, it's yeah. interactive. Get Brian, were, you, were you in New York when the Boston would do the Sunday nights at the Boston? Yeah, when I, know, talent I was, did that a couple times. I, yeah. I, that was, so Sunday, so the Boston Comedy Club uh -huh. was, in, was the, in New York. It was in New York. It was called the Boston Comedy Club. It was in New York, and it was around the corner from the Comedy Cellar. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Sunday night, talent, who's just so hilarious he was one of the like the new york kings of comedy right and yeah he would host this thing and crush and it was and all comics were outside all that. comics were outside and you were nervous you tried to get on and he put me on one time and you know it's just it's just it's really like it, it was felt like def jam but like bring it be funny now yep. oh this and was black night it, yeah it was yeah, it was yeah. a sunday night but like but all comics would go but yeah and everybody was like it was like a it was a, an event and um and I did it and and luckily it went well but it was one of those where you're thinking the whole drive down you're like this is this is gonna be my yeah. drive home is either gonna quiet. be dope or <laughs> <laughs> up. Like, yeah. you know? when I was a new comic I didn't I've been doing stand up for exactly ten minutes and I was at the New York Comedy Club on Twenty Fourth Street yeah that's not, the first is, place I ever did in New York City me too is yeah. it still is it still happening? yeah yeah uh, the new owner Emilio took it over a few years ago yeah. it's, it's fantastic well I I, uh, I it was an all black crowd. And I tried. <laughs> go up? I tried some animal shit. Is there bro. anything worse? No, I tried some animal shit about what's it like to be reborn a legless, they legless bird it. in the middle of the South Pole. No. I'm a, I'm a and you know when no. they're not having I'm it. Doing this. You I'm did a, the no. penguin thing. No. I'm like, you yes. did the penguin joke. You know what I heard? I heard this woman go, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't get better from there. Yeah, they'll let you and know. I, I, I was like, I was like, I got a feeling. I go, I'm, I'm. It's not for me. <laughs> well, it's not for me. Not Dude, I did, I did. I did one. I had one really bad. I, I had good times, and I had good. And I would get into contests and do well. But I had one I never forget. I drove down to Philly to the to the Laugh House. 
It was a black room on South Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, yeah, man, I just got back from Kansas City. And just one woman goes, why? <laughs> <laughs> and dude, and the show was long. It was like, <laughs> and I knew right when question. she said, dude, know, she, right? said, she said why? why? And I'm like, not even 30 <laughs> seconds in. And dude, people just, it, it was like two hours. Yeah. And, I'm, oh, and the guy God. the guy before me goes, I think it was, he called himself Sugar Bear. Rest his soul, he passed away. But it was like all of these comics, and they were like, oh, you'll go, you did good last time, so you're going to co-host which i mean uh, you're gonna co-headline with sugar bear and he goes up and he was supposed to do 20 and he does and he goes boy now they're tired <laughs> <laughs> and then they bring me up oh, i just got back from kansas and she just goes why and people just slowly started to like uh -huh. be they just slowly uh, they just started walking the next, like the midnight show was about to start and yep. people just start slowly uh, and i just stayed in it man. is that sugar bear uh yeah rest his soul yeah uh -huh. he, uh yeah i heard he passed away but so he it was that he goes on because before he goes on he goes I think they they're getting tired they're getting tired or they're almost tired then he gets off he goes now they're tired <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I went up and just tried staying in the pocket people slowly it's the only time in my career that people just were just tired they kind just of getting up, them, just yeah. kind of like slowly walking out and then some the people stayed out. and I just fuck I remember it I got paid. And I, as I got paid, all right, take it. Like, just want, all right, like, I didn't even want to say thanks or bye. No. He's trying to get to your car. Sometimes right? you'll find one. Hey, you guys keep drink. that. <laughs> you guys keep it. You know, just keep it. I don't need it. You know, you guys keep that. Yeah. <laughs> a gesture, a token. There's a guy I won't say his name, but he's at the comedy store, and he he goes on very late, and he shouts, you know, a lot. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he he got up. He tried to get up. And at a club, and on the road, and they said, "We'll we'll we'll headline you," and he he's got Not exactly ten minutes. Yes. and it's funny if he's shouting at one o'clock in, in the morning <laughs> at the comedy store, and people the yeah, prime you, hours. I know, I know exactly. You're and about. so he 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 gets up, and he starts going, <laughs> and people are just like, now I, I mean, people are from this is in Kansas, and they're like, what <laughs> the fuck? They're like this, no, what's going on? <laughs> It's it's too much. Not working. He tries another. In fact, it was in. It was a fucking god. It's a club in Michigan. It doesn't matter. So he, he it. and they are so white in Michigan and everything else. And he's he's just from New York. He's in here, and um, he in the middle of the thing, he goes, okay. He literally he goes for supposed to go for an hour forty five, and about 15 20 minutes in he goes thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and runs away and they couldn't find him and they couldn't find him and they found him at a dunkin donuts <laughs> and, he's, and he's sitting there like that drinking coffee like that and, and the, the owner coffee. of the club comes in and goes hey man you're all right he goes i, I can't have your headline he goes, no problem no problem i get it i get it when a bomb hurts it, your it, soul it hurts it's, your when you have soul. one club you do it and you're and people yeah. look at you as a novelty you gotta you and know. nobody nobody no matter what level you're at will ever not have that you can be oh. at the top of the mountain and do a joke that gets nothing and you just still but i think what happens is you get bulletproof where you're like you, you i think you have time, different tools you're like yeah like you're like in your mind you're going okay this is one where i have to do this or that and different tools come out sure. and you get through that but one of the funniest shit you know you guys know when you see somebody that you know on stage and it's not going dude i was <laughs> i was at the stand and my buddy's hosting and he's just hosting the show and he's doing all right and then he does a joke that gets fucking nothing and then he just goes no but i like you guys what's going on back there <laughs> <laughs> he goes yo dude he goes no but i like no but i like you guys and no, he, pointed, like to, no, he, he pointed to a dark corner i don't even know if anybody was in the corner he pointed to just he just picked a spot in the corner. i like you guys what's going on back there dude i fucking know what's going on it was it was the nah, like you guys no, man. Man. <laughs> like it was like him talking to himself going they didn't like this but no, i like you guys man <laughs> I like right. the fact that he pointed out. Yo, he like, pointed to a dark corner and goes, what's going on back there? It's so related. It's so relatable. Anything like, but me right ah, now. Can God somebody God, throw you guys a go with me? How about that? Hey, throw a fork. Can somebody fucking break a glass? Any anything is better. Anything, <laughs> anything, anything, anything right now. Anything other than me <laughs> yeah. is better. It is. Oh there, there is. There is absolutely <laughs> nothing worse. It gets when it gets that quiet. And you're not like you guys, though, man. No, but hey, I like what's going on back, what's going on back there. Is that a date? Back there. <laughs> hey guys, man, <laughs> please throw me.
me something. Hey, what do you do? What do you do? Huh? What do you What do you do for work? <laughs> no, you guys are great. You ready to keep the show going? <laughs> uh, you got. I know. Yeah, when somebody's not doing good, you guys seem ready now. <laughs> this is trailing out. Sir, Let's keep sir. this energy up. <laughs> <Your> next headline. <laughs> sir, where are you from? You look like a handsome <laughs> gentleman. Oh, that's Let's so Let's keep this energy oh, up. Oh, fuck. What else you got, Jim? When you're starting out, <laughs> fuck, man. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> but to that point, I've, I've seen Burr when we're at, we're at the Laugh Factory. <sighs> Everyone's eating dick. Everybody's <laughs> eating dick. Everybody. Then Burr pops in. And every, you know, <laughs> season <laughs> comes like, good luck with this, Burr. Burr's like, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes up there, and instead of, like, just doing his bits, he just lights them up, man. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you guys? And just fucking yeah, yeah. goes at them, and then, dude, standing applause. Of course. God. And then he, he's like, are you guys good? And then walks out like, Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ. I, I did a show with him recently, but guy goes, yay! And he goes, I don't need your support. I don't want your support. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. And shout out, I don't want your support. Like, right, there you Such go. a beast. Yeah. Oh, so what funny. else you got, Jen? Okay, Ooh. so an eight-year-old boy has a puppy who had parvo it's a really bad disease for younger dogs and it could kill them <clears throat> yeah. he made he went viral online because he basically sold his rare pokemon cards to try uh -huh. to save his dog he was trying to raise 700 dollars. him and his mom set up a gofundme and when people saw him trying to sell his collectible cards they actually raised up to five thousand dollars for him so his puppy is great but pokemon found out about this and is sending him a bunch of new replacement cards so now these cards are going out for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, like if you have shit. Pokemon cards from like the 90s, the early 2000s, you can yeah. sell them for a bunch of money Good now. Good for him, man. Fuck. So now on top of it, he's just like, he has a great investment. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Kids, kids yeah. with dog, if you buy your kid a dog, that's it. And know that and yeah. know that you're going to spend all the money. I, you, I, keep I, that thing alive. You got to get insurance for your dog because you're not going to go home and say your kid, the guy. There's certain things that a dog has. Like if you, if the dog's got cancer and it's going to cost me $5,000, you gotta do it. But you gotta no, do it for the kid. Well, you got a kid. It's so my buddy buys, you know, mm. he buys two Italian Mastiffs and they're like very they're expensive. Yeah, Cane Corso, right? Yeah, Cane Corso. Yeah. Yeah. So he gets these two amazing That's dogs. The best kid now, now I, uh, yeah, now I, I know my friend, my friend travels a lot. Mm. I also know that 250 pound dogs is not the best thing to have in Los Angeles yeah. for a lot of reasons. I also know that he doesn't have a lot of patience and he's, again, travels a lot. So I say to him, I go, that's a bad idea. Because nah, nah, I got it. So he gets he gets the dogs, and the dogs now he starts to realize well they're puppies and they shit everywhere and they pee everywhere and they're and he starts to do he goes well they're gonna get bigger. You're gonna turn into lions. So he goes like this. He goes, he goes. Uh, this is the dumbest idea in the world. He goes, no. Get rid of them. The they he get goes, huge. Hey, I can't take the dogs. I got I yeah, I gotta give them back. I goes all right. I get it. You know. He goes I, I you know. And he goes, he gets money back. He said that was a I, that was whew, dumb idea. It's a dumb idea, man. I don't know what I was thinking. It's fucking crazy. I, mean, I, I travel for six months of the year anyway, and it's impossible. Yeah. And they're fucking 150 pounds. I don't know what I was thinking. Like, one of those things where you're like, Boop. and he goes, uh, <laughs> he walks in, he goes, gotta get the dogs. Gotta get the dogs. The guy's coming to get the dogs. His sons, both his sons, like this with the dogs. They go, what? And he goes, not happening. We gotta, go, we, we gotta give the dogs back. <laughs> he goes like this. The kid just looks at him and goes like this. He looks in death serious. He goes, that does not work for me. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend just goes, he goes, all right, fuck it. He yeah, fuck it. <laughs> he's got the dogs for life. Now he's my, my kids love dogs, but their mom's a fucking hater, man. Yeah. She just doesn't like dogs. Yeah. It's because she didn't grow up with dogs, right? I, I know, feel like it's one of those on, things if you don't dog. grow up with yeah. dogs. You, got, you also got a trained killer. I, I got a Navy SEAL for a dog. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? What kind of dog you have? I had a, a Malinois for a while. Yeah. I don't even know what they look. What I don't even know. It was the one it's, we brought it's, up. It's the German Shepherd. Oh, that's oh, Tito. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. I want one of those. I want like a badass German you don't Shepherd want one and stuff. The problem is, they, yeah. The problem is they're gonna bite somebody. The problem is you oh, do something really? wrong. Went for my son. Or like, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. have this. And they always yeah. look at like I wanted to get one just to protect the house and like. People that's why like, I got it. People were like, your family members are going to come over and the thing's going to be staring at them. Like, if it's not that's like immediate, happens. they just like, dude, it's, my, they're so on also, alert also, that they're also, like, dude, dude, my, my, dude. My only, the only commands I had were in German. It was so yeah. intense. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a lot. And they'd come over and have to learn German. I'm like, I don't want to do all this, yeah. man. And also, when your kids are roughhousing, your friend, the kid's friend the kids jumps don't know. on and the there's dog's like, things, oh, you're attacking There's like my... snaps and stuff. Yeah, dude, I don't want to buy a dog and then have to learn another language. Oh, dude, it was exhausting. My buddy's a fucking, my buddy's a SWAT team. He's a SWAT team sergeant. He's got his dog that takes down dudes. He's got about 100 bites on the street. You know, he knows the taste of human flesh. The dog, he's like, my dog's a light switch. He's a very friendly. He's a light switch, though. I can, you know, he's very One trained. One word. 
So his friend comes over, and the dog, the dog is sitting there like this, and the dog goes, <laughs> and my friend goes, Nuff. and he goes, he goes, and this is what my friend does. He goes, are you afraid of dogs? And he goes, well, that one. <laughs> he goes, well, don't, because he can tell when you're afraid. Just act normal. Oh, okay. yeah. I don't want a dog I don't like fucking yeah, yeah. act normal. But also, those mal malinois, they, they're like, make sure you're running them a few miles a day. Like, he was uh, exhausted. Oh, because you had to, like, no, I, I became out. a coach. It's, so, a yeah, working, no. it's a working dog. So that's yeah. a certain a type of dog. German Shepherd? Uh, it's in the same family. It's okay. a, it's a, any dog. Like it's, an that, those are really the military, and those are the dogs that the Navy SEAL uses. And, and, the, and the police, police officers. Yeah, they, they need a job. They're super athletic. They, they call yeah. them sharp dogs. They need a job. So they, they, work, they yeah. bite quickly. Like, yeah, they yeah. want to work. They're so very we have to run like eight miles a day yeah. within them. I don't want this. That's why I hate seeing. Yeah. Like I saw this. German. I saw somebody with like a Siberian Husky in Manhattan, and I'm going, dude, that thing needs cold. That wants to work. It wants to pull. Like It shouldn't be in the city. Yeah, no. It's you know. exhausting. What else you got, Jen? So the French president went outside to greet people oh, and this. he got slapped oh, in the face this. by a protester. Just because they don't like him? Yeah. I'd love to do this to Newsom. Watch this. <laughs> First of all, the way he slapped. And he was like that. He was like. <laughs> it was a very French slap. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the that, that protester had a little sugar in their tank. With yeah, that, right. That 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 that. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. But you also, how's the CIA not... <laughs> I know, what the fuck? Is right. too he went like that? And he went like, <laughs> in some countries, in some countries it would have been like, boop, boop. Oh, yeah. 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 Like in Dagestan? <laughs> Guillotine? <laughs> yeah. Pull your head off your that fucking body. Just a knife? Just, just axes, you just see multiple axes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blood's coming back to yeah. you! Yeah. <laughs> Fuck oh, that. fuck. These guys are always ready. <laughs> what a lame slap. I know, right? Uh, just the best is you knew say. <laughs> and then, and then this. Like this. <laughs> you go here, and then you bring it. <laughs> <laughs> because it was too much for you. Uh, that's great. Boy, sugar in his tank. Oh, yeah. God. So what else you got? Uh, so I think we should probably do this. What? There's a Korean barbecue truck that's in Southern oh, California. God. I think it's here in LA, too. Oh, shit. So, so, truck tires? Oh, no, this is for, like, our team. Because it oh. would fit, like, four people, I think. Or even Food Truck Diaries, too. I like that, though. The guy that uh, that made this, invented this that thing. Scion, though. Scion. Scion. <laughs> but the guy that invented it, he was actually the winner of the Food Truck Race, whatever, on... Remember those shows? Oh, on no, Food Network. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, see more cooperative. <laughs> did, did you see the, Oh, you didn't see the the great the food truck the great food truck race. Because I did it. But you're being, you're being <laughs> I, 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 I need a reference. It's like you guys know that pot like you was on American Idol and won the fucking food truck. You're like, is it a sky on? Yeah. Was, yeah, I never heard of that. No, I have so. <laughs> All right, well, we get it. You don't know what <laughs> coming in all hot yeah. dog. Calm down. You're so mean. What's his dad said? This is fucking the grown man in the sky. On. <laughs> scion, scion. <laughs> Do you guys know the food truck thing? No, I don't. <laughs> no. But what check else? it out. Oh, for food truck diaries? <laughs> I know, right? Well, for what then? <laughs> uh, so you rent it for five hundred bucks. We can bring it here. Yeah, right. in the oh, yeah. That's not cool. bad at all. I'll do it. Yeah, it has does all the it meats. Look, you know, you know uh, Korean Barbecue Kitchen does it look it's legit. It's definitely decent. Well, decent is different than yeah, that. Decent <laughs> doesn't yeah, make you me get jump on towards that. it. Yeah. Uh, he's a, you might not get sick. <laughs> I love that word. It was decent. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's raw meat. Decent. It's raw meat that you cook in front of you, too, so that's awesome. <laughs> I'd be down for that. All right, cool. Yeah, 500 bucks. I mean, that's, that's, that's not bad at all. Especially if you don't have to wait three hours like we did last time. Yeah. That and... Now, you know what it is? Like ask, ask me ask me how my career is uh, ask me if I if I'm if I'm working and doing any film. You work in other things. Now you know what it is? Like right now <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing's going or on. I know, or sometimes no words, you just go, yeah, how'd that thing go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, no, no, now the oh, thing is how you doing busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah? yeah? You making money? You know what it is, man? <laughs> right yeah. now. And and you know what too, like in our business, you have those friends who are your friends, but they want to get off the phone. They want to get off the phone first to like yeah. You know, yeah. you'll, you'll be like Makes talking. Like the and they go, "All right, man. Well, listen, I got, yeah. I got, I got, yeah. I got this meeting, and it's like, dude, we're, we're yeah. Yeah. So we have the yeah. same yeah. front. Yesterday <laughs> when we were talking, I go, "Hey, we're going. To, I'm on a hike with Tigers. I'll call you back." We we pulled up to Barnes and Noble. We get out, and my Tiger goes, "Dad, did you did you, did you lie to your friend?" <laughs> 
I go, yeah. He goes, why? Because I, I didn't want to talk to him anymore. Because the conversation was going nowhere. And of course, I know so that. I, so, so I just told him that so we could get off the phone. He and goes, why don't you just tell him we're at Barnes & Noble? I don't know. He's asked questions. <laughs> it, the hike seemed easier. And I know that, He too. goes, so you lied to him? I lied to him. Yeah. You shouldn't yeah. be lying to your friends. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I know it's a lie. Because yeah. I'm like, ah, yeah. I, I can already tell we're both like. I was in a car. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we can talk about how things suck yeah. or things are good. But it doesn't. Oh, who cares anyway? Yeah. See you later. I lie about how far I am. When oh, I'm going, you do, yeah. Wow. Oh, you're that guy. Yeah, like, dude. One time, my buddy's like, "You here?" Yeah, I was. I go, dude. I'm like, I'm like, dude. I'm like, 20 minutes. I was in a, I was in a diner eating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in a diner in Queens. Because you're lived, in your mind. And in my mind, like, I'm going, I'm gonna just hop on. Like, you think there's gonna yeah. be no, uh, no traffic, traffic or no, obstacles, no interruptions. So yeah. everything perfect to get there, and you just lie. And then he's like, "You're, you're, you're not." It was bullshit. Left. There was a thing, a whole ice town that I'd be late. I was oh, chronically late. What happened? I go, it's fucking water main break. On the <laughs> but then I would take the same route to get here. And I'd be dead serious, lying to his face. Oh, yeah. The water break. So I'm stuck in the, and I'm pissed. I'm stuck. I've been waiting. <laughs> you start lying. So now I'm outraged at the water main break that never happened. You do that stuff. I got in a fucking, this is the other thing. I got in an accident. You did? I got my car's all messed up. And that I just. Pulls up. Normal. <laughs> Not a scratch. Normal. What I else you got, Jay? Last one. Last one? Um, all right, let me pick this one then. Is this? No, not that. Hmm. This. We were tagging this like a bunch. It's just covered in. Just look at his Whoa. dog. Oh, damn. That's a piece on him. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a God, piece. dog. <laughs> That's a real piece. Holy shit, dude. Mm -hmm. At first, I was like, yeah, that's just a dirty I know, elephant. yeah. I was like, yeah, you showed us that. Oh, is, that a, is that a male or female? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I've ever seen in my life. It's basically a touching the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sneak you a sock on that. Yeah, it's a, that's a big ass dick. Jeez. That is a, <laughs> Why the, that's a big dick. I know it's a big that's dick. That's the way to close it out, right? <laughs> that's that, that's that. Uh, Chappelle and I and David Lucas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Brick Sound Comic Club this Thursday, Stop. Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Dope, yeah, dude. great club. Yeah, did you yet. get the food? Did you eat the food? Yeah, yeah, great club. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And they own Spokane too. Yeah, Tacoma. but no, that the seafood place that's not like that's around the oh, corner no. from it. Yeah, dude. Uh -uh. Yeah, you got to get the crab cakes and believe it or not, the cabbage. And I was like, cabbage, and they were like, you never had sauteed anything like cabbage it. Cabbage with butter, it was, really? Yeah. It was good. It was sautéed cabbage with like butter and the and the shrimp and the crab cakes. Nuts. Oh, we're in. And it's right near the, where you're at. Oh hell yeah! Oh damn! Yeah. You know the name or not? I'll be at Paul's favorite club, Albany, uh, June 18th, <laughs> and, and then and he's then worst club he's ever been to. Albany. I know. Right? Uh, funny bone. No, what, how did he describe it? Uh, June 18th, the 19th, and then uh, yeah, you he's, said if they if they hear this he said never go back you, you're fine with it personally he personally, said if they never asked me back i thank them <laughs> personally oh, fuck. what are you gonna do not have me back in a mall <laughs> personally personally i'm looking forward to going to the capital of new york state and, uh, in june and then i got philadelphia pa helium comedy club june 25 26 27 get your tickets that's it i'll be in fucking magoobies no, in july sure. and then gray in august what you say? yeah yeah you know where I'm at. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so I, uh, this weekend, yeah, well, yeah. this Friday, Saturday, I'll be doing the uh, Vulcan Gas Company, Austin, Texas. Great uh, yeah. Great uh, one spot. show Friday, one show Saturday. We'll see you, Austin. Uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, I will be. Well, actually, that might nice be guys. that might be moving. Yeah, but that might be moving. Great That's club. at the end of the month. Uh, I will be doing my first theater gig, guys, in October. October 22nd at the Wilbur. Tickets are on sale for that. I'm shooting my special in September. All dates are going to be updated on paulverzi.com. Check out the Verzi awesome. Effect podcast, me and Bill Burr's podcast, Anything Better. Check out my new YouTube channel, and uh, I appreciate having me, man. Yeah, I love it. appreciate it, man. Great. You guys, you guys are great, fucking man. hilarious. Uh, right. Pronounce your name? Your last name? Paul Verzi. 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 Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to meet your Paul dad. Verzi. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was great. Bro. No, but I like you guys. I gotta yeah, get out of here. I know you. <laughs> oh, it's that over there, man. I like you guys. Yeah, I like you guys. What's going on with these producers over here? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Grubhub is here, y'all, and what they want you to know is they serve restaurants. Grubhub loves restaurants. From the food to the passion and determination of people behind them, they know that restaurants' reputations matter. They'll be damned if their reputation suffers because of them because good food deserves good service delivered fast, fresh, exactly how restaurants intend it to be. Restaurants work hard to serve the customers, and Grubhub works hard to serve them. All right? Whether you're a podcaster, stand-up comic, or just an overall badass, you're working up an appetite. That's where Grubhub got you covered, man. We got you covered. You can order through the Grubhub app or online. Let all the stress from eating, finding your next meal, get out of the way with Grubhub. All right? The app, you just download the app, Grubhub. We serve restaurants.
Today, Grubhub is doing a little extra to serve Panera. Get a free delivery perk on your first order from Panera Bread of $15 or more. That's Grubhub's delivery perk on your first order from Panera of $15 or more. What's up, Fire and the Kid listeners? Few housekeeping notes for ya. I started a new Thick Boy YouTube channel. I've dropped all three vlogs from my uh, Miami trip of the Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul. Subscribe now. We're going to do a special giveaway. When we get to 100,000 subscribers, we will pick three lucky random subscribers. I will fly you out to L.A. to work out with me and my crew at Zoo Culture Gym in Woodland Hills, California. So as soon as we hit 100,000, we'll randomly pick three of you. You'll be notified, and I will pay for all your travel, your lodging, and your workout. It's going to be dope. So head to this site right now. It's Thick Boy. Uh, you got to uh, search it right now. Um, and you'll see it on there posting a bunch of videos, bunch of content. So head to there right now. But this weekend I'm in Oklahoma city with Chappelle Lacey, David Lucas. It's going to be a beast of a show. That's June 10th through the 12th. That's this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Brickstown comedy club, Oklahoma city. Then I get a little break. Your boy will be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh improv, July 22nd through 24th. Get tickets right now. F A T K Z dot com man if you're out there and you're a cbd user or you don't know about cbd and you want to try one you're like it's just so complicated i gotta go to this side go to this or maybe you have your favorites and you're like i usually always use this i wish there was an easier way to get this done i got something for you I'm talking about direct hemp it's like the amazon of cbd you can choose from dozens of products from multiple brands the most popular brands probably the brands you're using right now and get everything shipped in one convenient box they have all the brands the major ones orders are shipped before Order ship before 11 a.m. Central Time. Ship out the same freaking day. All right. Orders are dropped off right at your doorstep. E uh, Direct Hemp members get free shipping on every order. You can also set up subscription. That's what I did. So for your favorite products, you get them automatically sent to your uh, house at your convenience when you set it up. All right. They usually add a free gift to every order, so it's always easy to try new products. Uh, they also have 24-7 customer service. They have 100% satisfaction guaranteed. All you got to do... For all your CBD needs of the best CBD products in the world, go to freaking, uh, what is it? Direct. Go to directhemp.com. Promo code is thick, thick with three C's, T H I C C C, for 10% off the entire damn site. Father Day's coming up. I know your dad's joints hurt. Give him some CBD, man. Get him relaxed. Maybe he has anxiety. CBD helps with all that. Go to directhemp.com. Promo code thick for 10% off.